All right, y'all, weatherman has got us again. I got up this morning, looked at radar, looked good, looked clear. Thought we had till about noon today before the rain started moving in. Well, get out here, get on the water, already raining. Dang the weatherman, man. But listen, we out here, we're gonna make the most of it. So let's drop some bass down, see if we can catch us some catfish today, y'all. I'm gonna stick in the chest here while I get these baits going. And me and you gonna get out here and get after them, buddy. So let me, let me show you the rigs. This is a new, call it a new variation of a rig that I'm playing with. We're, we're gonna be doing some dragging today. Up here on a three-way, we've got my dragging sinkers, which you can learn how to make these down in the video description. There's a link there. These things are simple, easy to make, and they pull through cover amazingly well. Off of that, we got an 80-pound monofilament leader down to a float and rattle a few inches above a 10 aught size circle hook with this one has a skipjack head. But if you noticed behind this on the tag end of that line, we've got a catfish sumo bait stalker fly. And my last trip out, I was playing with these rigs and had some success, but I've made another change. So on that trip, I was running these flies closer to the bait. The, the fly would be up here just, just right below the bait. This one, I've got a little bit more distance behind the, the line here. I think this one's maybe 12 inches or so behind the bait, and my other one there is a little bit longer. So we're gonna just play with these today. Experiment with these rigs a little bit and see what all we can get. So I'm gonna drop that sinker down in the water just a little bit so you can kind of see how these rigs are running. There's my float, there's my bait, and then you've got that fly going behind it so hopefully as we move along we're going to be creating a scent trail with the piece of cut bait we're going to have something these fish can lock onto, and then they come up to get the cut bait or see what's going on we got that fly going behind there that looks like a smaller bait fish so this rig here exact same setup uh, different color float, that doesn't matter. But we've got a skipjack chunk for the cut bait on this rod. And then you can see here, this fly is a, a little bit further distance away from the bait on this rig. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to play around and just see like what's the best distance to run these flies off of these dragging rigs. You know, this is just kind of a, it's a work in progress, you know, it's just experiment. What I need to do is learn how to get the dang line wrapped around the rod tip. That's what I need to do. It happens every daggone time I talk to a camera. So, we're going to cover some water out here this morning. Apparently, we're going to get wet while we do it. So, I hope y'all packed your, I hope y'all packed your rain suit or umbrella or something. But what we're going to do here, I'm letting out this line right now. Don't you all let me forget. Y'all are bad about letting me forget to flip them bells over. We'll have all our line off the dang reels and we won't even know it. I'm going to show you here on the screen uh, what I'm doing. So we're off the bottom of a drop here. Up here, this area, which is over here to our right, this is a deeper flat. And, you know, on the map here, it'll say 20 some odd feet. Really, right now, the water depth's mid-teens with our water level being down. I was looking at that on the graph when we were, when I was coming out through here this morning because I kind of thought that there might be with the weather the way it is and water temperatures warming up, there might be some fish up on that flat feeding this morning. It was barren though. It was just, it was dead up there. There wasn't bait fish. I didn't see any other marks, nothing. I mean, it was just nothing. When I come over the edge of the drop though, and it started to drop off, that's when I started seeing schools of bait, started seeing some bigger marks. And so I think that's the, I think that's the play this morning. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna follow this ledge all the way up through here this morning. We're just gonna work on the bottom of this drop, right on that brake line, all the way up through here. So right now we're about 45 feet deep and that'll, that'll vary a little bit as we make our way up but I come out, I launched in a creek, and I've come down river a little ways uh, so that we can hit both the creek mouth that I launched in, 
that will go past it. And also there was another smaller creek that was here on the map before they made the reservoir that flowed out. I saw some fish around it as well. So I wanted to get below it and that way we could pull through it as well. And then we're just gonna work this ledge for, you know, I thought we was gonna have about a three, three and a half hour window this morning before the heavy rain moved in. And the rain right now, it's just enough to be a, a, a nuisance, but the heavier stuff's coming today around lunchtime. So I thought, we'll just, we'll just cover a stretch of this. You know, if we're moving, say, a half a mile an hour for three hours or so that we have to fish, that's a mile and a half. And so I'm hoping in that mile and a half, we're going to come across several fish that are hopefully willing to eat. So let's flip that bell over here. I'm going to let out just a little more on that one. But I've already got our speed set. We're going to move 0 0.4, 0 0.5 as we go along. If you all get a little water on your lens there, holler at a player. Okay, I need to know if I need to use a squeegee on it. Y'all may have to teleport through the screen and use a squeegee you dang self. But this video today, y'all, I'm just going to... I'm gonna leave the camera going. We're gonna go unedited, raw and uncut. You're gonna see the whole daggone trip. It's gonna be a short trip anyway today with because I'm planning on being off the water 11, 11.30. I'd like to be out of here before the heavy rain hits, especially since this wasn't even on radar when I left the house. Thankfully, I had the rain suit in the car. But uh, you know how them weathermen are, man. You can't rely on them for nothing. They're they just I think they just flip a coin and tell you whether or not it's going to rain and clearly it's going to rain today so I'm just going to leave the camera rolling this morning and whatever we get into you're going to see it all whether it's fish snags whatever but spoiler alert if you're seeing this we got on some fish so it's a it's it's been it, it's one of them things like I'm excited. I get excited from time to time when I try something and it works out. And my last trip out there where I was using these flies, it worked out. Now, I only caught one fish that actually ate. I caught several fish, but only one had actually eaten the fly. And then I foul hooked a couple more with the fly where they had come up and tried to eat the cut bait and rolled and got the stinger hook. But I was excited about it because my fear and what's kept me from doing this, trying this rig before, is just the fact that I assumed having that fly trailing behind with that exposed, I, I just assumed that it was going to snag on everything. That it would just catch on any kind of brush down there, logs, whatever. And the fact that, I mean, I fished a few hours out there on the last trip and didn't I snagged one time, but it wasn't the fly that got snagged. It was just my whole rig. And so I was able to go back and and pop it free and, and get everything back. But it's very, very encouraging. So now, now it kind of comes to the point. It's like, okay, now I know I can run it. I can run this rig without extra snags. How can I refine this so that we figure out what's the best way to run it? Is it a short leader is it a long leader um you, you know you just don't know i mean obviously the longer you run that leader from the, for the fly the distance between the, the your hooked bait and the fly the longer that distance is the more that fly is going to sink down and so what you don't want to do is have it so long that your fly is dragging bottom because then that then you're for sure going to get snagged if it's on bottom but that that dragon sinker, it goes down. It's it's obviously moving along the bottom. And then that peg float that you've got, it floats your bait up. So between the float and just the water resistance as you're moving along, it keeps your bait up off the bottom, just off the bottom. And then that fly is obviously behind it. So dialing in that distance is going to be what we need to work on now. And I'm curious too, like, the longer the distance there, will we pick up some different types of fish? I mean, if the, if the fly is right behind your bait and a big fish comes up and just nails the whole, it's possible they could get both the fly and the cut bait. But when you've got a, some separation there, 
that's when they're going to have to make a decision, one or the other, potentially. And so I'm, I'm just curious to see how it goes. It's also possible, too, I think, if you got enough distance between that fly and the cut bait, that when you come across multiple fish, and, and this has happened to me multiple times, where fish are just going after the same bait. I mean, you're reeling up a fish, and another fish will follow it up trying to rip the bait out of their mouth. I've actually hooked two fish on the same hook twice before. So I'm I'm thinking it's a possibility that we pull this rig long enough, we may very well hook two fish at the same time, one on the cut bait and one on the fly. So it's, uh, you know, it's just one of them things I'm excited to try out. So I wanted to get out here, even in the lousy weather, and just see see what we can do with it this morning and um, I, I really wanted to fish yesterday but and the weather yesterday was much more appealing but I got stuck at the house because the damn AT&T they are on my duty list big time I will never recommend AT&T to anybody ever again so we'll tell that story at some point today but um, Mainly this morning, it's just going to be about, it's just going to be about covering water. You know, trying to run in some fish. I do have another rod with me that has a, a hair jig on it. And so if we start seeing fish that are up like, say, 10, 15 feet deep in the water column, we'll toss that jig out and see if we can snipe them. I haven't been doing very well with that lately. I haven't seen a lot of fish that are up, so... You know, I don't really want to, I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to fool with that. Because it's hard when you, when you're dragging like we're doing now, we really want to focus on that brake line, right where it starts to come up real sharp, like right over here beside us to the right. It's, it's going to have a big increase in depth or, you know, you know what I'm trying to say, like we're, we're kind of leveled out here now and it's going to come straight up. I want to focus on that edge. And when you're trying to snipe fish, you're kind of just moving back and forth. You're just looking. And so it's hard to follow a specific path. It's hard to drag and snipe fish effectively at the same time. So I would really rather focus on doing this technique. And then if we just happen to see some fish that are up, then work those with the jig versus trying to do them both and ending up not doing either one of them effectively. So that's kind of my thought on that. But the view for y'all, I'm going to leave y'all in the chest here for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, because that seems to be the most popular viewpoint for those of you who have watched these unedited videos before. You like to kind of see the first person, everything going on. Um, the other reason, too, I can kind of protect the camera a little bit with my hood of my rain suit. So we're going we're going to try that but if y'all get too much rain on the screen there just holler at me we'll see if we can't squeegee it ain't gonna be much of a view for you to look at this morning because it's just it's rainy and foggy i think it's about eight o'clock right now but with this rain it's just a it's like a mist it's like a light sprinkle. It's just enough to be annoying. It's enough you need a hood over your head. It's just enough to be, get you wet, basically. But thankfully, it's not too terribly cold. It's in the low 50s this morning, so it's... If it was if it was in the 40s this morning, I'd just be at the house. So I ain't going to be cold and wet if I can help it. But I'm just, I needed to get out here and, you know, I was stuck at home yesterday because of damn AT&T. And so... I needed to get out here today and see what we can do with this rig here. See if we can play with it a little bit and hook a something on it. I got a couple more variations of stuff I want to try with it too over the next few months. I want to I, I want to run these flies. Well, obviously right now we're running off of the tag end of the hook right so it's following behind the cut bait but another thing i want to try is to run a fly 
up toward the top of the three-way so that your our sinker and our hooks say down here and a fly is coming off just above it instead of behind it it'd be above it so that's one thing i want to do um, another thing i want to do is play with the uh, strength of the leader line so i use 80 pound monofilament for my catfish leaders that's pretty standard for me whether i'm dragging suspending casting baits out and fishing on bottom i, I use 80 and i like 80 because it's thick enough that you get some abrasion resistance because these catfish especially big catfish they've got almost sandpaper like texture mouths so it's, it's very rough it's very abrasive and you can get some wear points on your monofilament especially if you're using a smaller diameter so 80 pound is is a lot it's very abrasion resistant the other thing when I'm landing fish, I don't use a net. In the kayak, a net just takes up too much space. I like to just grab my fish by hand. And so I need a strong leader line so that when I grab that leader and that fish thrashes and rolls, I need it to not break. You know, because when I've got a hold of that line, a firm grip on it, there's no give. It's, you know, you know the drag of the reel has been eliminated in that situation. So that's when you're at the greatest risk of your line breaking if you're using a smaller a smaller pound diameter line so that's why i went with 80. but i feel like as far as running these flies go catfish aren't real particular about line size like they're not line shy at all you can do heavier lines and not affect your catches but a lot of other fish species are line shy and so as far as bycatches goes things like stripers um, drum things like that maybe even some other uh, bass species like largemouth smallmouth potentially that might eat that fly they may be turned off by the fact we're using such a heavy leader line so i kind of want to play with some smaller diameter leader lines and just see if we get more bycatches because of that so you know that's one of those things it's like is it worth the risk you know if, if you yeah, say you got let's say you got 30 pound leader line and that's the day you hook that 100 pounder like do you want to try to land that that 100 pounder with the 30 pound line you know be landing it by hand here in the kayak so that's just one of those things i have to think about but i'd like to run that experiment just to see if we get some more bycatches i'm inclined to believe we will but that's just my thoughts the only way to know for sure is to actually run the experiment so a lot of things like that i want to do uh, over the short term here but today we're just going to be trying the the rigs we got on with the longer distances uh, between the where the bait ends and where the fly is see how that goes and i think that right there is a log that we're about to go over this may be a test to see if we get get snagged and whatever that is we're going to try to pull right across it and there's definitely some something down there on bottom i don't know if y'all can see that I don't, hell i don't know if y'all can see it all at this point you got water all over the lens folks you gotta tell me these things i don't know if i made that better or worse let me try, <laughs> try that again how's that is that any better at all i want you to be able to see but also want you to be be at a point where you don't get have water all over the lands too so i can't just have you set down the floor of the kayak the whole time that ain't good for nobody it's just one of them days y'all man this is real world fishing that's the thing about these unedited videos it's like if you were out here fishing with me on this trip which is the goal of these unedited videos to make you you know basically bring you all along with me well, if you was here, you'd be sitting out in the rain with me right now. So, 
it's just one of them days you, you can't you can't always have sunny and 75 unfortunately it's just not how it works if you ever want to be able to to fish you wait for perfect weather perfect conditions and you just ain't gonna get very many days on the water something went crazy splashing right there right there beside us on the right but i fished and worse that's for dang sure as long as we off the water by the time them heavier rains and potential storms come through today i'll be be all right i picked this section of the river because i'm filming this on a saturday morning and i thought i thought there'd be less boat traffic here and so far so good with it being Saturday and us into March now, these bass tournaments have started back up. So you got to deal with them. And I knew any potential creek that we, we might want to fish as far as catfish goes would be one boat after another going by. So I thought out here, I think we snagged. I thought we had a fish for a second. I think we're coming across that log down there. Let me give it a little slack and pick up and over. Okay, we come over it then. Let's make sure we're we're past it. Yeah, it's still coming through. I feel it. We got our sinker over that log. Now here's where it gets sketchy: is when that when that fly comes over that log. So when you get hung. It's not your sinker usually that gets you. It's the it's the hook burying into the wood. That's where you start losing rigs. So far so good. It's I feel it. It's kind of rough. I think it's gonna be okay on that one. But that's what you do on that folks when you see your rod tip starting to load up or you're snagged if you'll give yourself some slack and pull straight up you'll oftentimes just go right over the top of it if you if you let it get just buried into it or you start trying to jerk it real rough that's when you're gonna that's when you're gonna have problems I think, we're, I think we're through the worst of it on that one. Now right here. Okay. Let me see if we can clean the... Okay, y'all good on the lens there. Let me show you this. So here's one Here's that one of those creeks I was talking about. You see this, how it kind of winded down through here and dumped out right here? We're going to come across right along the bottom edge of that as we move along here. Now, when I come down through here, first thing, I saw some fish kind of in this area here. So I don't know if they're still there, if they've moved on or what, but if they are, we're going to be pulling baits by them here in just a couple of minutes. Actually, I think I may. I don't, I don't want to jinx this. I may be able to lose the hood here for a second, y'all. Get some, get some air movement, get some freedom. I hate wearing a rain suit. I, do, I hate fishing in the rain. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do, people. Until y'all learn how to manipulate the weather, and I have to believe by this point in, in our time on Earth, if it was possible, the government would be doing it. But until we can, we just going to have to deal with it. Hell, it actually looks like it's clearing off a little bit. It don't look near as foggy as it did a minute ago. Yeah, there's some some fish right there. I don't know what those are. But it's funny, I saw a lot of that off the bottom of this drop. There was nothing. I mean, all on that flat, I followed that flat all the way out through here. Just nothing. All those fish were off it. On my last trip out, I was fishing in a creek. My regular viewers done 
see that video, but I was in a creek and most of the fish I caught were between 30 and 40 feet deep. Uh, that was kind of the hot spot in that creek. So is it a situation where they're just kind of at that depth right now in various places or are they just kind of in the deeper creeks? Don't know. Okay, come through that snag as well. This one over here on the right is going to be more likely to get snagged today just because of the way it's running. The rod here to the left is coming through the bottom that's a little bit more flat. Whereas this one on the right, because we're right on the edge of that brake line, like it's it's not only pulling along this way, but it's kind of going... As, as we get too close to that brake line, it's like going up the ledge too. And typically when you pull up something, that's when you're going to get snagged a little more frequently as well. So when we have situations like that, it's mainly going to be because it's that rod as we make our way up through here. <clears throat> but somewhere somewhere up through here on this ledge we're going to run into some fish obviously we did if you see in this video we've ran into some fish somewhere but they could be anywhere up through here i mean they just they move along these ledges they might hold if like if there's an object if there's a sunken tree or something like that a muscle bed something that'll some either some cover or a food source that will give them a reason to stay there for a period of time they might hang out but otherwise they're just on the move they're just working these edges they'll come up on these creeks they'll follow the old creek channel back go in their feed come back out so we're just trying to get fish that are in transition this morning moving along this ledge that's really what we're going to be focusing on That's a pretty good mark right there. Look at this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the transducer a little bit. See if we can get a better look at him. Yeah, we'll be coming up on him, him here in a minute. He looked like he was about 40 feet-ish deep down there. So I figure our baits are probably running I don't know. We're 45 feet, so our baits are probably around 42 feet deep. Fly may be a little closer to the bottom than that. So we're going to be right there close to its face when we come through, as long as he kind of sticks around at that depth. But yeah, y'all, we got, we got a window this morning before the heavy rain moves in. Tomorrow, the wind is supposed to be up. So I'm going to try to make a bait run tomorrow. Uh, I think I'm going to go back down to Alabama and try to do some pre-fishing for the tournament I got coming up. And um, the wind report down there, and you know, hell, it's a gamble every time you look at a weather report. But it's looking okay. I've got like a two-day opening there, so... I think I'm gonna try to get some bait tomorrow morning, midday, drive down tomorrow afternoon, evening, spend the night in Alabama, fish two days, and then drive back home, and then just go back down the night before the tournament. But I went down there on an exploratory trip, and uh, it just didn't, I had one good session which y'all saw that video from it, but my the next day I fished, I hit three different spots and just couldn't. I just couldn't get anything going. I caught one fish combined for the three spots. So fish right here, right here. Oh, look at him pull some line. Look at him pull some line. Okay. Oh, look right here. Look right here. Look at, we're doubled. We're doubled, y'all. We just went through them fish. Look where we're at too. Look where we're at. Right there. 
right there in front of that old creek mouth. That's where our baits were probably at, right there. We didn't see many fish. We saw that one that looked big that we just come across, but I had seen some more when I come down through here before I got set up. So clearly they're still around in the area and we got two of them on right now. I'm gonna deal with the one in the hand. We'll get him up here to the surface and then we'll, we'll pick up on the other one. This one here feels pretty good. Business just picked up, y'all. <laughs> just picked up. Man, that's exciting, y'all. And here's the other, here's the other part of this. What did he eat? Did he eat the, the cut bait? Did he eat the fly? No way of knowing till we get him up here. Actually, I'm concerned. Okay, that other one's still on. Thought he might've come off, but he's still there. I'll tell you what let's do. I'm just gonna spot lock right here a second. We get done with this, we get these two, we'll circle back and we'll come right through there again. y'all y'all remember to bring a net i was just talking about how i'm gonna have to grab these fish if y'all brought a net with you you could net this thing for me y'all ain't much of a fishing partner i know that never prepared fortunately i like him so i got you covered i'll use my glove here and we'll get hold of this thing it's funny all the people I see making fun of me about wearing a glove, landing fish. They're also using a net. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, they, they think they talk about me like I'm less of a man because I use a glove, but yet they they won't even reach down and grab a fish. They gotta use a net for it. <laughs> oh, that's a good one right there. That's that's a that's a good one. Oh boy, he's taking back off too, ain't he? Let's see what he's got. Okay, he's ate the cut bait. That's a blue. Blue cat right there. That's a good one, folks. Fish number one's a good one. Let's do this. Let's set him back. Now, let's get this one. I have no idea about this one, how big he is. I had picked up on the other one when this one went down. Oh, that's exciting, y'all. Two fish just bam, bam. This makes it worth getting out here in the rain for y'all. I said if I could have fished yesterday, we'd have had a lot better conditions. AT&T. Worst, worst phone and internet company in the world. Broke it off in me yesterday. I got I to gotta remember to tell you that story at some point out here this morning. Because I don't want y'all being new AT&T customers if I can help it. I don't have a good feel for this one yet as to how, how big he may be. But he's, he's fighting like the dang dickens. I'll be getting close to getting him up here. Thankfully, that other one's staying on the other side of the kayak. We won't have to worry about them getting wrapped up in each other. Oh, that's another good one too, man. This one ain't this one here ain't quite as big as the first one, but he's a quality fish nonetheless. He's ate the cut bait as well. Okay. Well, let's put him back. This other one over here ought to be. He ought to be getting about tired out, so we'll land him first. Man, oh man, y'all doubled right here. Look, I mean, I'll show you again right here, right here where I spot locked that creek. 
is right there behind us. So I, I about guarantee those fish were just hanging out there. We, we only saw that one, the pretty good mark, which could have been one of these, but there was probably some more around there because that transducer beam, it's real narrow. So unless they're just lined up in it, you're not necessarily going to see them. But let me get my front camera mount set up here. You know, if y'all was a decent fishing partner, we could have done had these fish reeled in and landed. Because I could have been reeling in one while y'all reeled in the other. Boy, listen here, man. He's got mud all over him. Oh, come here, fish. Okay. Come on in. This is a good one. Fish number one is a good fish right here. Get the pliers on him. Okay. Let me set y'all up here in the, in the front seat. Let's see what we got there. Here we go. Let's hold this in up. Nice, y'all. <laughs> nice. This makes me happy. This is worth getting out here in this nasty weather. For and his friend's going crazy over here trying to steal his thunder. But look right here. You see on his tail right there? All up his back. This fish has been down in that mud recently. This, this other side over here is clean. But like he's been hunkered down on bottom, like down in that mud. Man. All right. Let him go. See you, buddy. Thanks for the good time. Let's land this one now. Now, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna circle back, put out our baits, and we'll we'll switch everything out too. We'll put on some fresh baits. That head may be okay, but this one we'll switch out, and we'll come through that area again. Okay, fish. There we go. This one's throwing the bait off, so. Yeah, this one's a little bit smaller than the last one. Fun size, either way. Look at him, look at his tail. He's got mud all over him too. Yeah, these fish, they're, they're coming out today. Probably ahead of this front that's coming through, so. Let's quit flapping our guns here. If I could get y'all to be quiet a minute, we could probably get some baits down here and get back on it, man. We're missing out on fish right now because I'm sitting here talking to you. But, yeah, that's exciting, man. I'm going to take that camera here in a second and show you on the screen here, too, before we get turned around because here's some more fish. Look at this. See them right there along the bottom? Popping up, those could be cats right there, potentially. They're just barely off the bottom. When fish are on the bottom, you're not necessarily going to see them with a live scope. But when you got a little bit of space right there, you can sometimes see it. So let's do this. Let's come off spot lock. And let's circle back around. I definitely want to hit that again. I've only brought two rods with me today. Oftentimes, places like this, where that old creek would have dumped in, those are places that I like to anchor on and suspend baits. Drop baits down right in that old channel and just wait on fish to come through because oftentimes they'll use those as a path. Fish out here in the main channel, when they move up, they'll follow that old creek bed. And so if you got baits sitting in there, just waiting on them, when they turn on and get active, you'll catch them. If you put time into those kind of spots, you get bit. But today I really want to focus on these dragon rigs with the flies and see what we can do with that. So I've just brought these two rods. But let's run down here. I'm going to go down here just past this. That way we we can get our lines out and get every, get our speed set and everything before we come through it again. Some of you probably ask, like, why didn't I just turn around where I was at and come down this direction? And it's because of our current, the current's going this direction right now. 
so you kind of need you kind of need to be able to go into the current to control your speed better otherwise your if the current is moving faster than you your bait and your fly will get pushed up around your sinker and you'll get everything all all wrapped up and stuff so it's just it's better to go into the current if you've got if you've got current flow okay let's get spun back around we'll spot lock for a second while we cut another bait i've got you know i'm going to just go ahead and put a new head on this one too even though this other head's still good we'll just we'll just put all fresh on and go up through here and since I'm going to reload on bait tomorrow anyway. I think that's that part of that tree there that we'd come across a little while ago. Okay. Let's just sit here a second. Y'all bear with me a second here while I get us another bait out. Well, my dang. There we go. Spot lock going crazy on us. exciting man y'all good luck charms with this if i'd been out here fishing by myself and didn't have you i wouldn't have, i wouldn't have caught either one of them fish y'all brought the the good judy today and it's kind of quit raining here for a minute too which is nice I'm actually get my hood and my rain suit off y'all can see out the camera lens like everybody's Things have turned around here on this day. Okay. Yeah, that, I mean, that head bait, I mean, it's still in good condition overall, but this one here looks much better, don't it? Okay. Let's see here. Let's see if that thing's got all wrapped up around our sinker there there we go okay now let's get our chunk put on on this rock i always want to get them hook points cleaned off there no scales on you got a scale on your barb or your hook point it'll cost you a fish quicker than anything okay did you see that i missed i'm two inches away from that bag and missed missed it Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come off spot lock. Get our speed going a little bit here. Set the course heading. And we're gonna push our cruise control, which will put us at a mile an hour. And then every time we hit the minus button, it's 0 0.1. So one, two, three, four, five. That should put us around a half a mile an hour. What's going on with my battery? Hold on, y'all. We got camera malfunctions here. Hold on a second. Bear with me. We got a battery problem. Always something, folks. always something man battery pack ain't working we're gonna have to change out a battery here in a little while that's a problem for a little a little while later okay let's get these baits going down 
this is taking way too long this has not been i've been talking too much i ain't been working efficiently here y'all do as i say not as i do how about that i wonder why my battery pack ain't working that's weird i've got another one I may switch over in a minute so that way we don't have any disruptions at all i want to get the bait set here first and get us working along this brake line again i'm not running we're not going to set these baits real far behind us today because the you can see the water out here is calm the wind's not blowing at all so no 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 reason to run them super far back look right here here's another one you see that mark there on the screen he's a little higher he's about he's between 35 and 40 feet there's some fish right here man slip that one over and we'll give that one there just a little bit more oh look at this i got dang slime here on my dang there in the bend of my arm it's like a booger one of y'all flung a booger on me. Okay. Let me get my purse here. That's what I call my camera bag. <laughs> it looks like a dang purse. Here's what I'm going to do a second. I'm going to... Y'all bear with me, would you? Y'all may hear some noise on the camera here as I try to slide this camera onto the new battery pack i apologize if it's banging in your microphones there well this one ain't i don't know you know it's always something with gopro all the daggone time there's a problem with gopro all the time man I can't get this battery packed. Uh, it may just be because the camera's running. Maybe I gotta, I probably need to undo the, I mean, that, that thing's fully charged. I probably need to turn the camera off, plug the battery pack in, make sure it's on, and then turn the camera on. I don't know why, I've never had to do that before always something folks always something I'll tell you what let me let me do that before we get up here to where we're gonna run <laughs> these fish again potentially let me just turn the camera off a second see if i can get the battery pack going i need a cameraman y'all one of y'all need to be out here dealing with this crap for me y'all I'm, I'm i'm working on the dang camera here and we've got another one going down man this was a hell of a takedown and you missed it all because I was trying to switch out the stinking battery. Oh man, we're right here. We're, we're right here to right there by that dang creek mouth. Y'all missed the whole thing, man. This is supposed to be uncut, unedited. And I got malfunctions all over the daggone place. It's always something, folks. I'm a, you know, I, I've, I've come to just learn and accept this in my life. If it's, if it's technology, if it's mechanical, I'm gonna have problems with it. I just had my trolling motor crap the bed here recently. I had all kinds of problems with AT&T yesterday. Now we got battery malfunctions on this GoPro today. I don't know what's up with my battery pack here. I've put a new battery in though, so we're at least good for a while. Even if we can't run the, even if we can't run the battery pack itself. Nothing else though. At least we got us another fish on and he he nailed it, man. I mean he was taking some line before I could get the battery, new battery in the camera. It's some, there's, there's fish in here, man. 
I'm waiting on that other rod to go down any time. This one's on the head bait too, or potentially the fly. He feels good. I'm actually working up a little bit of a sweat here. <laughs> this dang, this dang rain suit's like a, like one of them sauna suits that the boxing fellas use to cut weight. I may lose three or four pounds of sweat out here today. I see some little lifting bubbles coming up back here. I'll find turn far enough where you can see them. Oh man, that's a good one. Oh buddy, big blue. Big blue right here. Nice. Yeah, this is definitely a spot today, man. If if I was fishing like normal and we were we were fishing this spot, we'd be wearing them out and just just anchored down. We're just gonna have to keep working this area here until we've until we've caught these fish and they've quit biting. Actually, you know what I think I'm gonna do? We've got enough current flow this morning. We may just, we may just anchor or spot lock above this and let our lines go back to it for a few minutes and just see, see if we can catch them like that. Sometimes you get in a situation where where fish want a moving bait but it would be nice to just see just to see if we can catch them just sitting there keep our baits exactly where they need to be this one's a good one right here buddy man i wish y'all could have seen the initial takedown that initial takedown man he was stripping line you bit at the wrong time fish i didn't have a battery in the camera at that moment Come here, buddy. Oh, yeah, man, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. Okay. Oh, man, y'all. Oh, man, that's a big one. Oh. Where's, my, where's my pliers at? Watch this spot look here a second. Because we're above that creek now. We're way above it now. Man, oh, man, oh, man, y'all. What hook's buried in there, too? Oh, look at that, y'all. That's awesome. Let me try to plug the dang... I, this is probably dumb. I doubt this is going to do anything for us. But let me just try this a second. I imagine GoPro has probably done some kind of update. and It's knocked out my ability to use the battery pack. We'll make do though, my gosh. No, oh, buddy, look at that. Oh, it's a solid fish, man. <laughs> That's solid. That is a healthy, fat blue cat right there. He's eating good down there, man. Whew, you were a good time. I wish y'all could have seen the takedown, though. We missed it. It's supposed to be unedited, uncut, so that you don't miss anything. Dang. All right. Let's let him go. We got a boat coming here. I don't want them seeing what we're doing. Here you go. All right. Let's let this other bass fish in anyway. I don't give a crap. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reel in this other line and we're just gonna go set there a second. I just gotta, I just gotta find out like if there's there's a bunch of fish sitting there on the creek mouth. I just want I just want to give it a little time. There's two passes through there now. We've got good fish each time, so let's just it's worth it. I know we out here trying to experiment with this rig, but goal number one is always to catch fish. So let me get y'all back in the chest here. back around here what 
I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put us just right above that. We'll let our lines out. What little current there is will hopefully carry it. Carry it back. And we'll just give it like... I mean, we'll give it 10 minutes or so. 10, 15 minutes. And just sit there. If we get bit, great. We'll just keep doing it. We'll just keep, keep catching them. If we don't get bit, we sit there a little while and we don't get bit, then we'll go back downstream a little ways and pull through them again. Because, like I said, sometimes you find yourself in situations where fish want a bait that's sitting still. Sometimes they want a bait that's moving. And if you don't give them what they want on a particular day, you just won't get bit. So we'll find out here we'll know here in a few minutes whether or not these fish are just here and willing to eat or if they just they're keyed in on a moving bait today we'll know here shortly but that's three fish just wham bam bam get down here just a little bit further i'm gonna swing out the wind is just started slightly blowing and it is blowing this way up against the current so that may that may throw us off a little bit here if we get all spun around all cattywampus okay i'm gonna just move out a little bit further here okay Well, let's see if we can't fix this bait back. Yeah, y'all, I hate that we've got camera malfunctions. That's a terrible timing for it, or battery pack malfunctions. It's got to be it's got to be a, like a GoPro update problem because two battery packs, both fully charged, both having the same problem. Okay, let's let this thing turn. I'm just gonna drop that thing straight down and the current like i said you don't want your bait especially the bait and the fly getting all wrapped up around your sinker and that happens if you're dragging with the current and the current is faster than how fast you're trying to move everything gets pushed forward as your sinker meets resistance but i'm hoping out here today we've got just enough flow that it'll keep that bait and that fly behind that sinker. Hopefully, even if we get spun around a little bit in the with the wind. So we're going to be we're setting up here. We're setting up here right above, right above where that creek come in. So our bait's here, and, and the scent's going back and. Uh, Let's just give it, let's just give it like 10, 15 minutes. See what happens. We either get bit or we won't. Yeah, man. Three fish, that last one was a good one. While we're sitting here, I guess I'll tell you at and story. Like I said, I've had nothing but problems with technology lately from my, my other motor tearing up. We got battery pack malfunctions this morning. We, we got just stuff going on. So I've talked about in other videos how much I hate my internet service at my house. I've had charter internet for going on 18 years now. The charter has had a monopoly on the internet service where I live. If you wanted high speed internet, you were forced to use them. Well, much to my surprise, we finally have other options. So my local electric company has come out with their own fiber optic broadband. And they'd been talking about it like two years ago, but it's finally available at my house. So I signed up for it. Well, they're so far behind uh, because this is a brand new thing and so many people, everybody, everybody's trying to get on it, obviously, because it's 
faster internet than charter and it's significantly cheaper so everybody's trying to get on so they're backlogged so i was told when i signed up it'd be one to four weeks for the crew to come out and run the line to my house and then they would schedule an appointment with me to run the line from the outside to the inside right so no definitive time period of when it would actually be completed installed in my house ready to use but i was like whatever when it happens it happens because it's going to be better than charter well i'm i'm outside of my house the other night working on some stuff on the kayak tying some rigs and at&t shows up door-to-door -door salesman at&t and they say hey just to let you know we've got uh fiber optic broadband in your neighborhood now and wanted to see what your internet was and i told them i'm like look i've i've signed up with the utility board just waiting on them and they start going on their sales pitch how their plans are better than a utility board they're cheaper because i got cell phone service already with at&t their plan's going to be so much cheaper it's going to be better and they can get me done yesterday was when they were coming out they could get it done and i was like well all right then you know, look if you're cheaper and you can go ahead and get this done and uh, you know i don't have any loyalties to any internet company you know whatever so the salesman he's going over you know the prices of these plans and whatnot and the way that it was going to work out to be cheaper than the utility board was because of i uh, because i had the cell phone service through AT&T. If you have the cell phone service, you get $20 off per month for your bill. Just ongoing. It's not a promotional thing. It's just ongoing. You get a $20 discount per month on your internet if you have cell phone service through them. And, um, you know, I explained to the guy, I'm like, look, I'm not the primary account holder because that was a question I had. I'm like, do you just have to have a line with AT&T or do you have to be the primary account holder? Because I'm on a plan with my uh, parents. It's cheaper for us to be like on a family plan where we share a line or, or you know, add a line type thing than it is for us to all three, me and both my parents have our own individual plans, right? So, I, so technically the AT&T account is under my mom's name. And this guy... Again, he's a smooth talking salesman. He's like, no problem at all. You just have to have your address listed on that account for AT&T. As long as your address is on there, it doesn't matter if you're the primary account holder or not, you're good. So all you gotta do is just add your address onto their account. And I was like, well, how do you do that? And he's like, you just log in to my AT&T. There'll be an option there. Just add it in. You're good to go, man. He made it sound so simple. So I was like, all right, well, you know what if you can get me done quick and this is going to be cheaper go for it so we sign all the papers you know and do everything and at&t good to their word they show up yesterday they run a gazillion feet of that line running in my house everything it took them over four hours to do it but by gosh i had now have fiber optic internet so I basically increased my upload speed by 40 times, 40 times faster. I'm like, hell yeah, this is great. But we still got the issue that I got to get my address on my parents' account, right? And so I had logged in to my AT&T thing, because I know my parents, I mean, they ain't gonna be able to figure that out. So I logged on there and I can't figure it out. So I was like, you yeah, know, no big deal. I got to get out yesterday anyway. I got to go to Charter and take back my modem and everything and tell them where they can stick it. So I'll just swing by AT&T first before I do that and get them to just do it in the store there, put my address on, make sure I get the discount and whatnot. So thankfully, I went to AT&T before I went to Charter to tell them where they could stick it. Because I go to AT&T and the girl in there says, oh, well, you can't do that. Like, to be eligible for the $20 off per month, you have to be at a primary account holder with the cell phone service, which is what I was fearful of with the salesman guy. 
That's why I made sure to clarify that I was eligible for this. But he was adamant all I had to do was just get my address on their account. Easy peasy, done. And this girl at the AT&T store, she says, yeah, that ain't possible. She said, those, those salesmen that are going door to door, they don't actually work for AT&T. They're just basically, it's a contracted service to try to, to go to people in the, in the area there and, and sell their, their broadband. And she says they've had all kinds of problems with them basically just saying whatever they have to to get people to sign up. And I said, well, by God, that's a, that's a problem, all right. That, that's, they, this guy's done gone and done at this time. He's done pissed me off beyond repair. So I pull out my sheet as he had, he had sent me this, or he'd give me this little piece of paper that had all the information, websites, and, uh, you know, time they were coming, blah, 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 blah. And on the back of it, it had his name and his cell phone number in case I had any questions. And he And he made sure to tell me, like, hey, my name's is Mason something or another. It was Mason W. I don't know. I can't remember what his last name was. But on the back of the sheet, it was Mason W. Had a cell phone number. So I was like, I'm going to call this son of a bitch. I go to call, guess what? It ain't a working number. He gave me the wrong cell phone number. So now I, I went from already being pissed. Now I'm super pissed off. So I call AT&T 1-800 number and I explain to them what's happened. And the first person I get is speaking English as a second language. So we were having a lot of trouble communicating. But I think even though her English wasn't very good, she was able to understand my tone and realize that I was pissed and that she needed to escalate it on up the ladder. So I get her supervisor, who also has English as a second language, but is much more, we were able to communicate much better. And bottom line is there is no compromise to be had. I am not eligible for that $20 off per month. The only way to get me down to that price was she, she kept wanting to lower my internet speed. And I was like, no, that no, I do not want the lower internet speed. And it ain't about even the money. It's about the principle. Your salesman lied to me to get me to cancel the utility board service, to get, get myself off their list and go ahead and get you all installed. And he did that knowing damn well that once we've gone through this process and they've installed and they've, they've put in all that time, that chances are I just probably wouldn't cancel. I would just suck it up and just, you know, just, just pay the extra $20 a month. But folks, let me tell you, I am a man of principle and I don't put up with no BS like that. So I told AT&T, they can come up there and take all thousand feet or however the hell long it was running that line from the road to my house. They can come coil all that stuff up, get their damn modem and pack that shit up and take it back with them. Cause I'm done with AT&T. So I ended up, I got AT&T, spent all morning at my house while this guy installed the new fiber optic broadband. And an hour later, <laughs> we've done canceled the damn service. And I've told them to shove it up their hind end. So thankfully, like I said, I hadn't went to charter to turn in my modem. So I was able to hook it back up. And uh, I called utility board even though just the day before I had called them and sent an email canceling my request to have the installation done. And I had to just, I had to just suck it up. I'm like, look, I've made a terrible mistake. I'm sorry. Is it possible to get back on the list? And the girl, she was very nice. Um, she wasn't sure if I was going to get my same spot on the list or if I was going to be bumped up, you know, to the back of the line now, but she was going to try, she said, uh, since it hadn't been 24 hours since I had canceled that appointment, you know. So, yeah, man, AT&T on my doo-doo list permanently. If it wasn't such a hassle to switch phone services, I'd just get off AT&T altogether. I'd go with another plan. The problem with that is, is obviously cell phones, you got to have a certain, these SIM cards that you put in your cell phones are based on the carrier. You got to have AT&T card or Verizon card. So I'd have to go through all that. And the other issue is, is 
again, I'm, I'm on a shared plan with my parents. They live out in the woods, out in the boonies. at and is the only phone service that, and it don't work well at their house, but it works better than the others. You can't get any service at all if you got Verizon at your house. You just, you're in a dead zone. So that's why we've had at and to begin with. But I can't tell you, man, I was pissed. And boy, if I could ever get a hold of this guy that's lied to me. I, I mean, he left a fake number on that sheet so that I couldn't call his ass because he knew damn well he was lying to me when he sold me that crock of bull. So anyway, and again, I mean, I, I'm not, uh, the utility board is cheaper than AT&T without the discount. It is. But both of those plans are cheaper than what I'm currently paying right now with Charter. I pay $120 a month so that I can upload at 35 megabytes a second right now. I mean, it's ridiculous. So uh, it's, both plans are cheaper, but for me, it's all about the principle of it. You don't lie to me. I mean, if, if this guy was up front, here's fish, here's fish right here. Set, here we got us one. All right, folks. I don't know how long it'd been. I think this fish might have, he might have got my other line over there too. He better not have. With all them extra hooks with the flies on there, that could be a tangled mess. You didn't get out of the line, did you? did. Oh, you jerk. You're almost as bad as the line AT&T sells me, fish. Come here, fish. I can't believe you've done that. Now you've really made a mess. We're gonna have a... Boy, we've had battery malfunctions. Now we got a tangle. He's made it worse as he's thrashed around right here. Open your mouth up. Open your mouth. You know what? Don't open your mouth then. I'll just bring you in like this. No, now he wants to open. Uh-uh. Okay. Boy, at this mess, y'all. You've gone and done it, fish. Oh, Lord. Lord. Let's get that line out, my G. Oh, he's all wrapped up in it, folks. I don't even know where the line's at. There it goes. Well, he's a butterball of a fish. Smallest one thus far, and it's made the biggest mess. I don't know why you've done that to me, fish. Get out of here. He's gone. We've got a mess to clean up right here, y'all. This is going to be a... This is going to take a minute. Y'all... Y'all should have controlled that fish better. I don't know why you let him do that. You should have known daggone well this is going to cost us time without baits in the water right here. Oh, man. Maybe, actually, this may not be as bad as what it looks. But anyway, yeah, so AT&T, and the guy who done the installation yesterday, super nice guy. I mean, he, he couldn't have been more friendly. But again, I'm just, I'm a man of principle. I don't, don't lie to me. If the salesman guy, he could have sold me their plan. If he had just been like, look, you know, we're a little bit more expensive, but we can get you done yesterday, you know, while, while I'm still having to wait on the utility board and who knows when they're coming. He could have sold me on that alone just so that I could go ahead and have it because obviously with this YouTube crap, I mean, I need fast internet service, especially when I'm doing these long videos like this. I mean, this is the file sizes on these type of videos is just ridiculous. So he could have sold me with that alone. He didn't have to lie to me, but he did lie to me and I just can't let that go, especially when he's put the wrong number on there. And I don't think it's good for AT&T 
I mean, he had an AT&T badge and everything. I don't think it's good. They're going to use these, these contracted salesmen. They need to be upfront and honest about that. Like, I, I, don't, I feel like he misrepresented himself anyway, since he wasn't. He was working for AT&T, but he didn't really work at AT&T, if that, if that makes any sense at all. You know, I just, I, I feel like it's, I, I just feel like, I, I just feel like it was, the whole process was just a, could have been done so much better. But anyway, by God, they're going to come, all them lines they run and it was about a thousand feet or so they can come get it homie don't play buddy i, I don't uh I, I, i'm a man of principle even if it does even if it does hurt me you know i've got to stay on charter internet for a while longer but i've made do with it to this point so it just is what it is but I'm done with AT&T though. Other than, other than having a, a shared line with my parents, I'm done with them. They'll never, AT&T will never get business out of me again. Come on. What's going on with this line now? I'm gonna reel this in, just make sure our bait's still good. Yeah, it's still good on there. Let's send it back down. Let's sit here a while longer since we got that one. That fish caused a lot of trouble, didn't he? No bigger than he was. All right. All right, folks, we got our lines back out now. Not been the most efficient process with me today. I promise you it, it it should go more smoothly than it has. But, you know, we got them two fish pulling up through here. And I thought I'd seen them other fish coming down to begin with. And I thought, let's just circle back through. And then we got that the biggest fish. And so now I kind of feel like the play is to sit here a little while and just see see what's going on we, i mean we just got that smaller one but see if we get some more action see if there's some more big fish and if we're not getting bit in a timely manner well, then we'll just run back down pull through again and see what happens and if we get bit then well we'll just keep doing that if that's what it takes to catch a big fish we'll just keep doing it over and over and over if we come through again and we don't get bit well we'll just assume those fish have moved on and we'll keep going because like i said there's another this creek here you really can't even it goes back over here, but it circles around. There's a point, comes out, and it loops, and you can see how windy it is. But there's another one up here that I launched in that comes out, and so we definitely, if, if we continue on dragging today, we definitely want to make sure we hit it as well. So we got options coming down through here. Hey, and you know what? I think the battery pack's working. How about that? The bat technology's working again. We won't have to hopefully change out any more batteries. It's always something, man. Always something with technology. That's why I just want to, you know, uh, man, I go back and forth on this stuff. I, I, I know I, I'm just a walking contradiction. But you take that live scope right there, for instance. It's nice sometimes. If I'm net and Chad, I love it. If I'm seeing fish up in the water column and I can drop a jig down to them and get them to eat it, that's some of the most fun you can have fishing. I mean, it's when you see that fish and you can almost hit him on the nose and feel that bam, and reel them in, man, it's fun. But what I don't like is when you're not seeing fish. 
and you're just you're just roaming around and you're looking at that screen it's not fun at all and doing what we're doing out here today the live scope's pretty much just a novelty i mean i could have seen when i come across this flat this morning coming out here i could have used 2d i could have used side scan you could have used any kind of graph you don't need live scope you could have just looked and seen that you weren't seeing any fish on the screen on that flat I didn't need the live scope to know that. A regular, just basic graph would have showed me that, look, like, okay, I'm not seeing fish. I go over the drop, and then look, like, okay, well, now I'm seeing fish now, right? The live scope didn't help us with that. My plan of following, dragging along this brake line, we were going to do that regardless of live scope. Hell, the fish we caught, we only saw one of them, and I don't even know if that was the fish that eat or not. You know, there's no way of knowing. So it's like, I don't really need this crap. I don't need this crap to function. It takes up all this space. You got to have all that extra battery. Same with the motor, you know, spot lock, awesome. Having the course heading and be able to set your speed and all that, it's awesome. But do you need all that crap? No, you don't. And it's just, it's a constant hassle. Crap's always breaking. Your batteries to charge, and it's like, there's just part of me that wants to just scrap all of this stuff and just get back to fishing like like i used to and i'm constantly and again i know i'm a walking contradiction because i say that and then yet i still use all of this stuff it's like i like the i like the ability to have this stuff but I just want it to work. <laughs> I just want it to work like it's supposed to. And it's just, like I said, it's always something. Look right here. Well, that's a, that's a better fish right there, man. You see that on the screen? That's a better one there. He's about, he's between 35 and 40 feet deep. He's about 38 feet or so. He's right in there, man. Uh, I hope he picks up on our baits that are sitting. I don't know if that's a cat or not, but it's a big fish. And this down here under, it's probably some bait fish of some kind. There's some fish here in the area, folks. This is one of those. This is one of those situations where this creek mouth here. If we were just suspending baits today and we were putting in several hours on this spot we would probably catch some some good fish i think y'all are hold on i think y'all have got a my sleeves are wet i think y'all have got a smudge on the, on your window here bear with me that's a little better i think y'all were smudged you got to tell me these things folks this whole video today is a, this whole production's in the in the crapper man if we weren't catching such good fish today i wouldn't even post this video this is hard to film in the rain it's hard to get good content you can have some really good fishing in the rain like today i would assume because we got this front coming in it's supposed to be around noonish when we get that heavier rain and uh, storms and stuff i would assume these fish are probably getting turned on feeding up in front of it. it's why them, some of them fish we had saw they've come out of that mud they're feeding so you can have some good fishing in weather like this boy filming it's a challenge nighttime's another one that's tough to film in because you, you either get a glare or you don't get good quality and then nobody wants to watch a night video you can't hardly get anybody to click on it i'm curious it's one of the things i want to try with these unedited videos because i have a different audience there's some crossover i'm gonna kick back here a second Let's see if i can adjust the camera here so y'all can see i mean there's some crossover between the audience that watches my edited videos and the unedited ones a lot of my channel members seem to like the uh, both 
But for the most part, my unedited videos is a different style. It's a different audience. I can see it on the numbers when I look at the subscribe versus non-subscribe views. Like it's a, I'm reaching a lot different people with the unedited videos. And so I'm kind of curious to see if I can't do an unedited night video later on, you know, spring, summer, once it warms up and it's tolerable temperatures at night. I'm wondering if I can't get some, get people to watch an unedited night video, whereas I can't get them to watch the edited versions. So that's one of the things I'll probably, probably play with a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some carp trips unedited, probably try some night videos unedited. Uh, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a constant experiment. It, it's just figuring out what works, what don't, what y'all like, what you don't. We'll get it dialed in eventually. That's the best way though, to figure out what works and what don't is just post it. The audience will let you know if your idea is stupid or not. <laughs> that's, a, that's one of the great things about the internet. It's one of the, the best things and the worst things about the internet is you get total unfiltered honesty. If something's good, people let you know. If it sucks, they're gonna let you know. <laughs> so, it's just uh, the, the good and the bad. But you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. So it ain't like I can look at other channels and say, okay, well, that's, they're doing a three, four hour unedited night video and getting views I can too. I don't know anybody that's doing that. Certainly live streamers doing that, but, and I've had, I've done some live streams at night that have performed well but not the edited videos. And you know, I started doing these unedited videos a couple years ago with the ultralight trips and had a lot of success. And now I'm seeing a lot of people doing that. Um, they're posting two, three hours. Every time I open up YouTube, it's two, three, four hour videos of, of, of fishing trips, but I've not seen anybody doing it with the carp and I've not seen anybody doing it with the night trips yet, so. It's one of them things, one person starts having some success doing something, everybody's going to copy it and start doing it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can set a trend for the carp and the night trips too so they can copy that as well. <laughs> yeah. These unedited videos do go better when you're actually catching some fish on a little bit more consistent basis. With me and Daniel from Catfish Sumo, I fished with him two or three weeks ago, I guess it's been now. And we did an unedited video, and, and it started out great. I got two fish right away. I mean, within the first, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes it was. Got a piebald, and I got a, a pretty good size fish. And I was like, great, this is awesome. You know, getting bit, we're about to, we're about to tear them up today. And then him and I sat there for four more hours and didn't catch another fish. And it was like, then I was in a bind because I was like, should I post this at all? I mean, I got a really cool fish with that piebald and I'd had that other fish, but I was like, we just went four hours. I mean, we were conversating, we were talking and hopefully there's a podcast aspect to it. But I was like, can I really post this video? And it, it kind of just come down. I was back and forth, back and forth on it. And I was finally like, look, the only way I'm going to know if people are interested in this kind of thing or not is just to post it. And I learned that people ain't, people ain't in You gotta, you gotta have a little more action than what I gave in on that trip. So lesson learned, you know, and now I know. So going forward, you see videos like this, you're going to know that I've gotten some action. I actually tried to film another one recently 
And I caught some fish on that trip, but it took like 40 minutes or so to get the first bite. And then I had another pretty long break between the first and second fish. And then I kind of got on them. And so I was like, man, basically the first two hours of the video, I've only got two fish. I'm like, I can't post this. I just, so I scrapped it. I was like, I just ain't, even though, even though these trips, they're, they're meant to be unedited, like you're out here fishing a real trip with me, you still, I mean, from a viewing perspective, I get it. You, you want it to be a good trip that you're out here with me, not a, not a dud of a day. So I get it. I understand. You want, I want to keep things real, but I also want to keep things somewhat entertaining too. Your time is valuable and I don't, I don't want to waste it. I want you getting something out of these videos. So well, I'll tell you what, y'all, we're sitting here and I don't know how long it's been now, but we really ain't, we ain't got much going other than that one fish. I think maybe we ought to get back on the move. What do y'all think? That's kind of what I'm thinking. Let's see what's coming up behind us here. Let's let this boat go by and let his wake kind of settle a minute. And then if we don't get bit, we'll reel up go just downstream 100 yards or so and start making our way back up this ledge see if we get some fish on the move and if we don't well we'll keep going we'll go up here and see what's in front of this other creek mouth well i say that and we're getting we're getting a little love tap right here small fish right there the other one that bit was small too maybe the bigger ones are wanting to move and bait it's weird like that man and you fish are so particular sometimes like a good example last year when I fished that tournament on Kerr Lake North Carolina I was really struggling to catch fish. I had never fished there before, and I was just just winging it pretty much. And I'd went over, you know, a few days early to pre-fish, get ready for the tournament. And I was just struggling. I couldn't couldn't get anything going. And I'd finally the wind had kicked up, and I got tired of fighting it. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna just let this wind push me back to the launch. I'm just gonna drift my way back. Call it a day. And all of a sudden, Rod goes down. And I glance down at the graph, and I'm moving like a mile an hour. I'm like, that's odd. And another Rod goes down. And I'm like, ooh, okay, maybe we're on to something here. So my next pre-fishing day out there, I crank up the speed. I was dragging, and I cranked it up. 0.8, one mile an hour, you get bit, you slow back down half a mile an hour and less, they won't touch it. Increase your speed again, 0.8, one mile an hour, boom, getting bit. Why that was, I don't know, but they wanted a fast moving bait and if you didn't give it to them, they weren't biting. And so I ended up winning that tournament because that's what I was doing, I put my speed at like 0.8 and I fished that way all day and I caught fish and I got enough to win the tournament. But if I'd been out there moving normal dragging speed, which for me, I like 0.5 usually, 0.3 to 0.5, slow, I probably wouldn't have caught a fish on tournament day. It was just, they're just weird like that. It's just how it goes. I don't know why, but that's, these fish, they just key in on things. So you can be flexible, try to give them, try to give them what they want you can get more bites usually it's just sometimes it can be difficult to figure out what they want well let's reel up i'm gonna go ahead and switch out our baits too while i'm at it before we drop everything back down might as well let's just 
go down here and we'll pull through them again. You know, and this, like I said, this ain't what I'm doing right now. Ain't the most efficient thing. I mean, really, you want to keep lines in. The best thing to do when you're dragging is just keep going. That way you've constantly got baits in the water. When you're reeling up, running back down river, coming through areas again, all that time, that downtime where you don't have baits in, that's, that's time lost. But I thought it was worthwhile today, since we had both those rods go down with big fish and then we got the other one and sitting here spot locking hasn't worked out but i would have if if we hadn't have done it i would have second guessed myself so it's it's better that we did we've got all kinds of bait right here too right on they're right on the bottom yeah we'll just go down here and make a turn cut up another bait I think that's that tree or whatever right there again yeah we'll get our baits in front of that before we drop them down that way we don't have to run run risk of getting snagged in it okay y'all could have done had this bait cut up which it's could have done I can't get any work out of him, so I don't know what it takes to get any work out of him. All right, Skippy. Thank you for your service and sacrifice, Skippy. I'm going to try to feed you something big here. Skipjack's the one that really got to raw into the deal, ain't it? Jack at least been pretty easy to catch again. I'm gonna take for the tournament coming up down there in Alabama. I'm gonna take a cooler full of skipjacks and I'm gonna take me some. I don't know if I should say it on this video because I might be tipping my hand. I'm all you'll see when the video comes out. I don't want to say it right now because my competitions probably some of them watch these videos and i don't want to tip my hand on what i'm going to be doing at least bait wise down there before the tournament i'm not 100 percent convinced of where i'm going to be for the tournament yet i'm going to hopefully figure some stuff out when i go back down there and hopefully get on something i'm 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 gonna when i go back I'm going to spend some time on Pickwick. Our tournament, we can fish on Wilson or Pickwick. And when I went down there, I spent the second day that I fished, when I went down there, I hit one launch site on Pickwick, first thing that second morning. But I didn't spend much time there because there was a bass tournament going on. And there were boats zipping around everywhere. And so I pulled out of there and I went and hit another spot on Wilson. It didn't do any good. So I fished there uh, two or three hours. And then I pulled out and I went and I hit another launch. Fished another area, didn't do any good. So this, when I go back, I want to spend some more time on Pickwick. I want to just see, see what I can figure out down there. With us having the option of doing either either or i want to see what's the best place for me to potentially get set up on tournament day I'm gonna get our speed set here okay we should be slowed down and have bait set here by the time we get back up here to this creek mouth again. Where are we at now? Four total fish so far? Ain't a bad morning. 
all things considered. First couple hours here, four fish, three of them great quality. I'm happy with it. I just feel like I could have been a little more, a little more efficient with how I've done things. Got to be efficient to be successful consistently, especially when you're fishing in a kayak, which is an inefficient platform to begin with. It's your ability to cover water is is so restricted in a kayak. With your top speed, you know, mine, perfect conditions, I can go about four and a half miles an hour with that motor. So range is limited. The time it takes you to get from spot to spot limited. Then once you're in the kayak, obviously you, can, you can't fish 10 rods like you can in a boat. So you gotta be, you gotta be more precise with where you're putting your baits. You gotta be more efficient to overcome the time you lose traveling spot to spot. And so when I have, when I have days like today where I'm reeling baits up and running back and stuff, I feel in my mind, I feel like I'm against the clock almost like I'm, like I'm wasting time. It's a psychological battle. It's one of the reasons that I think I like my, my normal routine so much where I would basically say, take that creek mouth, for instance, set up on that spot, drop baits down and sit there for the duration of my trip. That, that's a very efficient way of keeping baits in the water because, I mean, your baits are in the water from, for the whole trip. You've got lines in. There's no downtime traveling spot to spot. And so it maximizes your time. And I know that may seem silly. If, let's say you lose... Let's just say you lose 10 minutes a trip because of inefficient practices, right? Well, that 10 minutes, I mean, is that going to cost you a fish on a given trip? Probably not. Maybe, but maybe not. So no big deal. What does it matter? Well, when you take that 10 minutes, let's say, just an example, you take that 10 minutes and you multiply that out by however many times you fish per year. So let's say you fish 100 days a year. Maybe you fish Saturday, Sunday, every weekend, all year, 100 days a year. Well, you take that 100 days, multiply that by 10 minutes, and you've lost hours of time without baits in the water. And I promise you, you do enough hours without baits in the water, it's costing you some fish. So the more efficient you can become, ultimately the more fish you're going to catch over the course of time it all adds up and so that's one of the things that i really try to to focus on for better or worse that's one of the things i really try to do i try to get my process down as as good as possible But this, I mean, dragon bait, I don't like dragging with planer boards. In fact, I hate it. Uh, if a day comes, I got to use planer boards to catch a catfish. I've, I've said before, I just assume quit fishing. But dragging like we're doing today, where you've got just a, a fairly short distance of line out. I only have got two rods to fool with. Don't have to deal with the planer board nonsense. Like this is fun too. Like you can get some big takedowns. And have a lot of fun doing this. I would do this far more frequently if I caught flatheads more frequently. You just don't get, I, I personally don't get that many flatheads while dragging. And that's one of the things, and I touched on this in the last video where I tried these flies out. That's one of the, my, the hopes of using this rig was that we might attract more flatheads with those flies. Because my theory was that maybe we're getting flathead bites while we're dragging and we don't know it. They're hitting those baits and sitting there with them, kind of just barely moving along. We don't even know they're on and then they spit the bait. And I'm hoping with these flies, maybe they hit them a little harder. 
you got the J hook with the fly, and maybe we land more of those fly hands. One of the things is we, we won't know until we put some time in with these rigs and try it out. So that's what we're doing out here today. The logging hours, man. Time on the water is the ultimate equalizer. Look, the more time you put in, even if you're not, even if you're not doing maybe the most effective technique on a particular day, even if you're maybe not using the best quality bait, you log enough hours you can overcome that and get and get some results that you want. But it's just, it's it's a time thing. You got to put the time in. And this year's been um, just so far to this point in the year, I haven't logged the hours that I would normally do in years past between the colder weather we had there a couple months ago to some of the high wind days to just real life stuff that just gets in the way. Like hell, AT and T yesterday, you know, had to be home to let that guy in the house, and took him over four hours and. Then time I do that and I go fight the battle at AT and T and make the phone calls, like hell the whole day shot. So stuff like that just it costs you time. And now I gotta go try to get ready for that tournament in Alabama, like I said, I'm gonna go back down there and hopefully fish two days, come back home because the wind is supposed to be up down there after that and then go back down the night before the tournament which where i'm going to be staying at down there in florence it's only a little over four hours for me so it's not a terrible drive it's really it's really not bad at all <clears throat> speaking of hotels so i was down there you know when, when i went down to alabama there last week I stay at the hotel and they got a, a continental breakfast basically. They got a little breakfast area and they put out some stuff that you wouldn't eat under normal conditions because it's garbage. But it's free so I went in there and choked it down and I was eavesdropping because I'm a little bit, if somebody's conversating around me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just listen to see if it might be something I'm interested in hearing. And the uh, maids, the housekeeping crew, was down there in the kitchen area and they were they were talking and and uh basically venting to each other about the problems they're having and i was very fascinated by it because i've never worked in that kind of industry before i, I don't know anything about it i when i was my first job at age 16 i was a cashier at kmart and so i you know i'd done that and then had some other odds and end jobs and then once I got out of college obviously I went into to, to nursing and then now this YouTube crap but yeah I don't I don't know anything about the hotel industry and they were going on about how people are destroying the rooms down there in the hotel these these uh, work crew they come in a construction crews and these i gotta choose my words carefully here i don't want to get canceled uh but these undocumented basically workers come in there'll be somebody that owns the construction company he'll book a bunch of rooms right he'll bunch book 20 rooms in the hotel and then the people that show up to check in are not necessarily um American citizens, if you know what I mean. Look right here, we're getting bit again. You think he's got it? I think he does have it. Yep. Look where we're at too. <laughs> right here above that creek. This one here ain't gonna be very big though. I think we'll keep, unless we, unless we just hook a big one right here, I think we're gonna keep going this time make some progress because we ain't got a whole lot of time left before this heavier rain supposed to move in 
I couldn't keep the the rain squeegeed off the glass when it was sprinkling there and misting earlier. I, did, I for damn sure can't do it when it's pouring down. Look right here. He done it. He's ate the fly. We got one on the fly, folks. Got one on the fly. It's happened. I told you them flies are getting us extra, extra fish. Come here, fishy. This one's the smallest one of the day. We've lost our pliers now too. There they are. Smallest one of the day. I almost wish he hadn't a bit so we wouldn't would be still have that bait down there in the water. But another bite that we wouldn't have got on the flies. Make sure our bait still hooked good. Yeah, it looks good. Let's send it back down. So anyway, uh, these housekeepers are talking about how these these people show up, they check in, they claim they don't speak, you know, they're going over rules and stuff and, and you know, non-smoking and yada, 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 and they claim they don't speak English. And then they just wreck the rooms and then they leave. So the housekeeping crew was like, they need to put some rules in place to where whoever it is that's booking the rooms, like they have to show up and there has to be somebody there that speaks English and and to try to keep them from having to to fix all this stuff basically. Like they were I mean they were passionate about it. So apparently it's a it's apparently a bad problem for them. I can't imagine doing that kind of work. It's got to be it's got to be awful. I actually, one time, I probably shouldn't tell this story. It's, it's a little bit of an embarrassing story. But ain't nobody left watching at this point anyway. And this is, again, this is the kind of crap we would talk about. If, if you and I, like if we were out here fishing together, this is totally the kind of story that I would tell you in person. But just sharing this kind of story with potentially thousands of random people that I don't know. It's, you know, a little, you know, one of those things that I probably shouldn't be doing. But <laughs> anyway, one time I did tip a hotel maid service uh, because I knew I had made a mess that they were going to have to clean up. And so I felt bad about it. And I had, I had only had $10 cash in my wallet but I left it on the bathroom counter for whoever cleaned that room. So what had happened was I was, uh, I was working down in Clarksville, Tennessee. I was back when I was doing the travel nursing. I was on contract down there in Clarksville and I would work a six on eight off schedule. So I basically go work a week, come home a week. And we had a hospital, I was working night shift, and you had a hospital cafeteria that was open down there for part of the night crew. And we didn't, it was a very busy ER. It was pretty rare that we had a chance to actually go grab something to eat. But occasionally we'd get to. And so one night I went down there and they had a salad bar. And for whatever reason, I was in the mood for a salad that night. and. And I'm not much on buffets and stuff anyway, because you know, people just in general aren't the most hygienic. And you know, they're coughing and hacking, sneezing everywhere, and it's all over the food. But anyway, I was in the mood for salad that night. I go and fix me a salad and take it back and eat it. And I was fine. Uh, I finished out my shift. I go back to the hotel I was staying at. I go to sleep. And I wake up and I'm in a sweat. And my, my whole stomach, my whole butthole is about to explode. Like it woke me up from a dead sleep. And so, you know, I go to the crapper and, and I hope none of y'all ain't eating dinner or, or breakfast or something watching, watching this video right now because y'all about to be disgusted. But anyway, it was a situation like 
Have you all ever seen Dumb and Dumber? Remember that, that movie Dumb and Dumber, Jim Carrey? And and the guy, had, his friend had fed him the X-Lax and like he was hanging on to the commode with his legs out like because he was crapping so hard. That was me that day. Whatever was in that salad that I had eaten the night before woke me up from a dead sleep and like I was hanging on to the toilet, folks. Like it was bad. I mean, I was sweating. Like I was out of breath when it was over and like i mean it just i mean it just it was all day long like i hadn't slept man i just i just you just couldn't you just couldn't go to sleep back to sleep because you had to get up and go again man it was awful so anyway i, I it was my last shift i was gonna sleep that day work the following night and then drive home after my shift and uh and, you know, it had been an all-day thing, and so I, I called uh, this girl Wendy. She was charging her there that gonna be there that night, and I was like, "Look, Wendy, I'm coming to work, but you're gonna have to put me. The, that ER's got like pods, different sections. So I'm like, you gotta put me, you gotta put me in the back because I'm gonna have to make a run for the bathroom at some point in night, and if you put me up front, I ain't gonna make it." So she was cool with it, but anyway, I'm going to check out of the hotel. And I feel bad because like, I haven't lifted the toilet seat up, but I know when you've got a war like that, that's went on, that's been waged all day, there's gonna be casualties. And that toilet bowl was most definitely a casualty. And I knew up under the toilet seat was gonna be the casualties of that war and I felt bad for whatever housekeeper was gonna to have to come in there so I took out my wallet and like I said I only had ten dollars cash on me that particular day but I left that ten dollar bill on the bathroom counter because I knew I knew she was gonna question her life decisions to accept that job that day so uh, I wanted to at least make sure she had a little bit of a tip I'd have left more money too. If I'd had more cash on me, I'd have left more. But I don't think I've had a salad bar since. That was several years ago. I don't think I've eaten at a salad bar since then. I may never eat a salad bar again. Yes, anyway, y'all, if you ever, if you ever at the Tanova in Clarksville, Tennessee, Think twice about going to the cafeteria there. It it damn near crippled me. I mean I I mean y'all seriously I was like hanging on I was sweating. I was out of breath afterwards. I mean I crapped that hard. It was intense. And it was all day. So anyway, hopefully y'all wasn't watching uh, or eating dinner while you watching this video. Thankfully, we're far enough into it. Nobody's watching this crap at this point anyway, so y'all didn't even hear about it. But that's definitely the kind of story we'd be, I'd be telling you out here and on a real fishing trip. That kind of stuff just, uh, it happens from time to time, folks. <laughs> that's the way it is. Moral of the story, don't eat, don't eat a salad bar at the hospital. Well, which, why in the hell do they even have a salad bar in a hospital cafeteria anyway? It'll make no damn sense anyhow. I think at the time too, I think that was like actual, I think that was actual hospital employees too that was running that cafeteria. Most of these cafeterias now, they're outsourced. Like the cafeterias here, you know, where I live and, and hospitals in Knoxville, they're all, it's a different company the hospital contracts them out. Which I don't, I mean, I could go on another rant about that. Hospital cafeterias and airports, they got you. They know you're stuck there so they can price gouge you on the food. In the past, when I've, you know, and I've, I've worked a lot of different hospitals when I was, I, I did travel nursing for 10 years before this YouTube thing took off and I was able to 
to leave that part of my life behind but I had been I had worked a lot of different hospitals all over and you know working ER you, you rarely get to go to a cafeteria usually you might you might go by there before your shift starts or something but you don't usually get to, you don't really get many lunch breaks when you're working as an ER nurse you usually just work straight through you try to bring a sandwich or finger food something you can eat at the desk throughout your shifts to snack on but you don't really get dedicated lunch breaks when you work you're supposed to they dock your ass for it they go and dock you 30 minutes whether you take it or not but you just don't really get that luxury very often but the hospitals that i've worked at in the past where you've gotten a cafeteria run by the hospital itself you usually got pretty reasonably priced food but you go to these hospitals that are contracted out where it's a different company managing the cafeteria you pay a ridiculous price for the food like everything's everything's more expensive just like when you go to the airport once you cross through the security and you're in the airport and you can access the restaurants there and stuff you i mean every airport i've ever been to hell you're going to spend ten dollars on a 99 cent hamburger because if you want to eat they got you you can't it ain't like you can just go to the restaurant down the road because then you gotta go all the way back through security again so they got you same way in the hospital like if you're at the hospital you're clearly there for a reason you're there to visit somebody or you know you've got a medical problem going on somebody in your family does and like you just you're there you're stuck there so they're going to charge you more and that's just that would be i mean i feel like and, and i'm not for government intervention you know i don't uh, we need less government not more government but situations like that where people are getting taken advantage of and price gouge i mean like that's the stuff that we should have regulations for like that's the kind of thing that should be something should be done about that and i'm not against these companies making profits don't get me wrong like i mean they they need to keep the lights on they need to be able to pay their staff and and, and all that but when you're charging excessively just because you you've got people in a bad situation that they're forced to use your cafeteria or your restaurant in an airport then that's that's a problem so anyway that's my take on that <clears throat> I got, you know, bottom line is I just got a lot of companies that I got problems with. My last unedited video, the one, well, it actually got posted anyway. I did that ultralight trip and I was talking about how I'd gotten rid of Walmart out of my life. I'd replaced them with a couple other grocery stores and getting Daphne's food from, from uh, that Chewy website. Now I got the problem with the AT&T and I've always had a problem with these hospital cafeterias and airports taking advantage of you. It may just be me, y'all. Because there's there's an old saying, if you got a problem with everybody, maybe everybody ain't the problem. Maybe it's you. And I seem to have a problem with every single company out there these days. So maybe the problem ain't them. Maybe it's just me. Either way. Either way, I'm done with Walmart. I'm done with AT&T. And I hope I never have to go to a hospital again. So I hope I don't have to deal with their cafeterias. I don't have any plans to fly anytime soon, but undoubtedly I will. And you'll have to, I'll just have to suck it up and pay their ridiculous prices. Can't avoid that. Speaking of Daphne, she got her butt whooped the other night. Now, I know a lot of y'all out there watching your your modern day parents don't believe it. When I was growing up as a kid, you got out of line, you got your butt whooped. When when I was a kid, I can remember being real little. My great grandma, she used to keep me. She's the one that taught me how to be a wrestling fan. She taught me cuss words. 
Learned a lot from her. But I got out of line with her. I had to go pick me a hickory switch. And you couldn't get one that was too little and you couldn't get one that was too big. You had to get one that was just right. Well, parents nowadays, these kids, they, they, they take away their Nintendo for a day. They, you know, they, they make them go to their rooms. So they just basically in there with their cell phones and stuff. They don't, you don't get a butt whooping nowadays. That's frowned upon. Well, not by me, by gosh. So Daphne the other night, this dog, every time I think that things are going to get better with me and her, like we've bonded, we've rounded the corner, things are better. She just has a way of reminding me that we're not good. <laughs> we're not bonded. And she's going to do what she wants when she wants. So I had taken her over to the uh, uh, Teleco Dam area. There's a walking trail over there and you can walk all the way to Teleco Dam and, and back. And so I, I, we had walked all the way to the dam and back and we cut around. There's a little beach area, swimming area. It's closed for this time of year, obviously, but um, the walking trail goes through there and around. So I don't know how much her and I had walked that evening but i would say it was probably close to two miles i mean we it was we were out there a good while doing that and we get back and it's it's right at dark when we got back home and i let her out the car and i go to hook up the kayak trailer and i do that and i unplug my battery chargers get just getting everything ready to go for fishing the next day and that took I don't know what a minute and a half two minutes to do all that I mean it don't take long to hook up a trailer and unplug your battery charger folks I tell you in that time that I did that that dog bolted because I had left the gate open because I was going to be going out fishing the next it was dark when we got home and I was going to be fishing the next morning so I just left the gate open she knew I left the gate open too bolted I get done undoing the battery chargers and I hear the neighbor's dogs next door going crazy. I look around, Daphne's gone, it's like, oh no. So I run over the fence real quick and I see her over there in the neighbor's yard. Look right here, is this, look right here. You see that, is that a flathead possibly? We've got a little bit of weight on there. We had just a little weight on that rod tip, folks. Oh. It wasn't a snag. It wasn't a snag because I could see it. It was given, but it was just a little, a little weight as we were pulling along. I wonder if that wasn't a flathead. And now I'm wondering if we got bait on here or not. Let's reel it in and check. And then I'll finish my story about old Daphne the dog who got, she got a butt whooping. Like I, I, I whooped her. I was so mad. Let's just see what we got. Yeah, the bait's still on. Make sure it's hooked good. Yeah, it's hooked good. I don't know what, I don't know what was going on with that. Maybe it was a flathead. Maybe it wasn't. Dang, I wish it was a flathead. So anyway, I hear the commotion going on because she's over there with the neighbor's dogs. I run over to the fence. I holler at her. I can still see her. I holler at her. I'm like, Daphne, come here. She stops, looks at me, sits there for a few seconds, and then turns her back and continues on. I'm like, oh, you little, you little hussy, you. I said other words than that, but I'll try to keep it PG here for the video. So, I mean, I was super mad. So I, I, I texted my neighbor up the street who she normally goes to his house. That's where she normally ends up is at his house. because so he's got dogs too. And he can get her on his porch, which has a locking door, a locking gate. And then I can go up there and get her. So I texted him. It's like, Hey, Daphne's on her way up there. Well, he responds back. He's not home. I'm like, Oh, great. 
So I just go back in the house because I know I'm not going to be able to get her. When she gets out of the fence, like she will not come to me. That's why I'm fearful of taking her anywhere, like on a fishing expedition, because if she gets away from me, if she gets off a leash, I'm not going to get her back. Like she just, she just will not come to me. She does what she wants. So I go back in the house because I'm like, I ain't going to, I ain't going to get her back anyway. I'll have to have one of the neighbors get hold of her. So a little time goes by and get to call. And it, it's this guy that called, he's not somebody I've interacted with in the neighborhood before. He's a little weird. And he tells me where he's at. And I'm pretty sure I've got the right house, but I walk up there and there's no porch lights on. I don't see him, I don't see Daphne. And I'm so I start second guessing myself, like, well, am I really at the right house here? Did I misunderstand which house he was at? And I don't want to go listen, it's after dark at this point. I'm not gonna just go knocking on a person's door that I don't even know who they are. I and mean, that's a good way to get shot in the face, you know. You just don't do that this day and time. So I call the guy back and I'm like I think I'm at the right house or do you have Daphne inside? And uh, he says, well, we've got a big oak tree. And I'm trying to be nice, right? I mean, I'm pissed because this whole situation with Daphne, but like, I'm trying to be nice. And I'm like, well, sir, there's oak trees all over this neighborhood. Pretty much everybody has an oak tree in their yard or you outside right now or are you inside and he says he says i'm in the back 40 and i'm like what the hell is a back 40 do you mean is that a backyard is that what you mean and finally he walks around from behind the house i guess back 40 means backyard in case any of y'all are wondering uh but he's back there and the way the fence is back there like I, I i walk around the corner and there's daphne so she's kind of cornered i'm like okay maybe i can get hold of her well she ducks under their car and she knows she's in trouble right so she ducks under their car and just hunkers down under there won't come to me and i got this guy who's a little he's he's different i, I don't know if he's just i don't know if there was some drugs on board if maybe he was on the spectrum, like I don't want to be judgmental or anything, because I real I don't know. He, there was just something off. It wasn't a it wasn't a normal interaction that him and I were having. If you know what I mean, like I don't know, I, I don't I don't I don't know this guy, so I don't want to be. Like again, I ain't trying to get canceled here or be insensitive. Like there was just something different, and I don't know. But anyway, he was nice enough to call, and so we've got Daphne under this car. And she's not going to come to me because she knows she's in trouble. We've, we've been down this road before. This is how she is. She's so defiant like this. Thankfully, he was able to get hold of her, got her by the collar and dragged her out. And I was able to get the leash around her. And I had to pretty much drag her home. And I was like, this is just so, it's bad enough she won't listen to me and won't come to me when I holler for her. But it's damn near embarrassing when she acts like she's this abused dog or something when when we're in situations like this i mean i mean even the other guy that she normally goes to his house and stuff the way she acted the first couple times when she would run up there and i would have to go get her like i mean i'm pretty sure even he thought i'm abusing this dog because of how she acts i mean she puts on a show and so I was like, you know what, dog, you, you want to act like you've got such a bad life and I'm so mean to you, by gosh, when we get back to the house, I'm going to whoop your hind end. So I did. When we got in the, in the door of the house, I whooped her good. And then I got her again before I stuck her in the crate. That dang dog, man, I, I, don't, I don't know how to fix it either. I, I kept hoping that she was going to grow out of it. Like, you know, once we got the puppy out of her, but I think it's just who she is. I think she's just a very defiant dog. There was a fish right there too that was up we could have thrown a jig at. But I think she's just very defiant. I was talking to this girl the other day 
that had some her she said she has a different breed of dog but she said her mom has had some uh female pits before here's fish here's fish oh boy okay that's a, that's a oh did he just come off okay he's still on there i thought he spit it we got another one folks to be continued on the story we've got to handle some business here first yeah we're 45 feet here where we're at we're just making our way along i'm just going to keep going until we get on some more better quality fish that appear like they might be on something we'll get up here to this other creek here eventually need to look at the time i need to look at the radar is what i really need to do one thing i've learned about these unedited videos you can't go over four hours or else you can you can title them four hours but you can't go over four hours that's the common denominator i've done five unedited catfish videos three of them have done really well two of them not so much two of them's like some of the worst videos I've ever put out as far as views go. The common denominator between the two that did bad is they went over the four hour mark. So we gotta come in under that today, for sure. Whether I get to fish longer than that or not, the video's gotta cut off at three hours and 50 something minutes at the most. This thing's a pulling, buddy. I think it's going to be a decent fish right here. He ain't fighting incredibly hard. I'm kind of having to drag him, pull him, really. So unless he's foul hooked, I think he's going to be a good fish because it feels like I'm pulling, pulling some weight. It could be a situation where he's foul hooked, though. That makes him feel bigger every time. I'll be getting close up here now. Yeah, that's another pretty good fish right here. Now he's wanting to take off. He saved his energy. He let me do all the work and pulling him up here. I was just pulling along dead weight, basically. And now he's gonna to want to take off on us. That's another quality fish, man. He's ate the, he's ate the bait, cut bait. Get her glove on here. Again, I can't get y'all to net a fish for me. Y'all didn't even bring a net, so I'm gonna have to do it my dang self. Bad enough, y'all won't help me reel in a fish, but you can't even net them or land them for me either one. Come here. Okay. Okay, fish. You're another one that's front camera worthy, by gosh. Uh huh. He's got a lot to say, too. He's like me talking to AT&T yesterday. We said it's up there a minute. Okay. There we go, folks. Another little butterball here. Fun sizer. He's still talking. <laughs> you got a lot to say. Tell, why don't you tell that to the Better Business Bureau over AT&T, by gosh. Why don't you call down there and give them an earful. That fish right there, he says he don't like AT&T either. He says they've been promising to run phone lines underwater forever there. They still can't get service. That fish right there, they're, they're, still, they're still using fax machines because of it. Let's get us another bait on. Put y'all back in the chest here. Bass boat man goes by over there. Loud as humanly possible. Uh -huh. Let's see here. Cut us up 
chunk. Let's go ahead and throw that tail out as well. Got all this extra bait since I didn't get to fish yesterday. I'm gonna end up wasting some of it. I don't like wasting bait. It is what it is. So anyway, I was talking to this other girl. She said her mom has some, has had some female pits in the past. And Daphne's not a pit bull, but she's got some, she's like a boxer pit mix. And my last dog, Roscoe, was also a boxer pit mix, but I think he had more boxer in him than what Daphne does. I think she's got more pit in her. But this girl was saying that her mom had had a lot of behavioral issues too with the female pits that she had had. It was kind of a just one of them one of them things with that particular breed that they were just very defiant and not so much with the males but the female pits were a problem so i'm like well i guess this is my life this is just <laughs> just the way it's going to be i should it's in the in in the end it's my fault i should have closed the gate i just her and i had just been over there to teleco dam and walked all that distance and i'd pr even though she hadn't been a particularly good dog on the walk like we'd seen some other animals and she was jumping around on the leash acting crazy like she does uh she wasn't a good dog but when we got back to the car i praised her for how good she had been on the walk i lied to her try to make her feel good we get home dark and i thought well, we're good you know she was gonna i was only gonna let her out one more time to to pee before we went to bed that night i thought i was good but she knows she knows when i don't close that gate like she knows well, she bolted for it before i even knew she was gone i mean she was at the neighbors so she got her hind end busted though i gave her a reason to hunker down next time and make a fool out of me she, I mean, she could be an actor, though. She could be, she put on an Academy Award winning performance. You would have thought she was just living the worst life of all time, the, the show she put on. She wouldn't, she definitely wasn't going to tell that old boy how I give her a bite of steak every night. And she gets a bunch of treats and gets to go on all kinds of car rides and all that stuff. She wasn't going to tell him any of that stuff. That guy was a little off, though, for whatever reason, whether it was drugs or something else. See, he was off. And I don't know why anybody would call it a back 40 instead of a backyard. Look at this boat going by. You think he's going to catch any fish today? I wonder if they've caught anything. You're gonna have to bust out a helmet if it starts raining again. Y'all ever? Well, some of you out there's probably ridden motorcycles and stuff, but when you're going 50, 60, 70 miles an hour and it's raining, boy, that rain pelting your face feels like needles jabbing it. I need to. I need to pull out my phone here and see. Take a look at radar, see what's going on. You know that weather forecast. Hell, it wasn't supposed to move into later and it was raining when I got out here. Let's see. Uh, hold on. I gotta undo the, get it to update here. Technology, you know. Actually, don't look too bad. I think we're good right now. Yeah, 
we're good for a little while, looks like. Okay. Well, that's good at least. Of course, I don't know. I looked at the radar before I left this morning. And it was okay, and then I get over here, and it's raining, so can't really trust it. But so far, so good. Nothing real heavy so far. We'll see if we can't fish maybe another hour out here. I'll probably, if I can still fish, I'll probably keep going, but I'll probably, after about another hour, I'll probably cut off the video just so I can hopefully actually maybe get some views on this one. That was another bass boat. There must be a tournament going on out here today. I think he had his dog with him. He either had a dog or a real ugly woman. I don't know. But back to the whole AT&T thing. So after the technician yesterday had got everything hooked up and we did the internet speed test, I was super impressed with the speeds, the upload speeds. Because technically right now, I have a one gigabyte plan with Charter. But it's not, it's not truly one, like it's one gigabyte download, but the upload, 35 megabytes a second. The upload's garbage. So these long videos with the huge file sizes take hours to upload. And so what I'd like to do if I get this faster internet eventually is to be able to upload quicker, save me a lot of time, but also to be able to publish them in 4K. So those of you that are watching these on your TV sets or phones with that are have the ability to view in 4K that you'll be able to watch them in that. But you get a three plus hour video, you're looking at a file that's at, in filmed in 1080s, 35, 40 gigs. You bump the quality up to 4K, you're doubling that. So it's, I mean, it's at 35 megabytes a second, it takes hours to upload as we're getting some more rain here. I was just talking about we're okay. And now it's raining. I jinxed it. Mm-mm-mm. But I think for the most part, that's the biggest drama going on in my life right now is AT&T and trying to get me fancy internet. And uh, we'll go down there, Alabama, and fish a couple days, hopefully get some video content from that. Definitely tournament day. I definitely hope to get a video that as long as I catch something on tournament day, I'll post a video. I mean, I'm not going to post a skunk video, but regardless of how I finish. I mean, I when I do the tournament videos, I show it all, good, bad, ugly. So if I do well, great. If I don't, I show you that too. I mean, I wanna be, I wanna be real, I wanna be authentic. As the rain is picking up, I, I just looked at radar, folks. I just looked at radar. it. Y'all holler if you need to squeegee. If it gets on the, camera lens just one of them days but yeah i'll go down there next weekend fish that tournament i'm just gonna go down night before fish and then drive back home well i we'll see my plan right now is to drive home afterwards but if the weather the following day is looking okay. I may stick around and fish another day. We'll see. Well, we got that tournament coming up here. Uh, that's our Alabama tournament. We got, I think Chickamauga's next month in April. Can't remember the dates on it, but um, 
that's our next tournament coming up so i'll start focusing on it a little more once this tournament's over with i'll start fishing chicks some more and and see see what i can get going there Chickamauga is one of the places I just don't fish a lot. I could probably count on two hands how many times I've fished it in my life. I, I just, if I'm going to drive that far to fish Chickamauga, I might as well drive a little bit further and fish Nickajack. That's kind of always been my philosophy on it. Like, if I'm going to drive an hour, I might as well just drive an hour and a half <laughs> you know, and go somewhere that's, I feel like I, I got a, much better chance of catching big i mean there's a lot of big fish on chickamauga don't get me wrong some really good fishing there but i don't feel like it's as good as nickajack so i'd rather just drive a little bit further if any of y'all are interested uh i told my channel members this i published a video the other day for them and and mentioned this but if any of y'all out there um were somebody that just wanted to meet me for whatever reason i if you're the type of person that's still watching to this point in the video maybe you're somebody who would be interested in meeting me but the tournament check-in location is log uh, yeah logan's roadhouse it's a restaurant in florence alabama and it'll be on saturday the 16th at 4 p.m central time our tournament is 7 a.m to 3 p.m central time and then we've got an hour to make it back to the check-in location there at, at logan's roadhouse in florence so i'll be there for the for the check-in so any y'all out there interested in meet me or you just want to come take a look at some some kayaks everybody in the tournament will have their kayaks there so it's a good place to kind of check things out see how people's got stuff rigged up what kayaks they're using things like that if you're you know if you're interested in that kind of thing so anyway that's where i'll be saturday 16th logan's roadhouse florence alabama 4 p.m central be there be square as i think alf used to say that wasn't that alf remember that tv show alf he was that furry alien i had the doll as a kid i was real little i think i was like five or six years old maybe when alf was on tv I think he used to say that. Be there or be square. Pretty sure that was Alf. I'm surprised they haven't remade that show. Of all the shows that they've redone, I can't believe they haven't brought that one back yet. I would actually watch it. I actually, y'all, this is, y'all make fun of me over this. But when I was a kid, my favorite toys were G.I. Joe's. Cause I, I mean, I grew up in the 80s, and action figures were the thing when I was a kid. I mean, I, I had G.I. Joe's, and I had pretty much every kind of action figure, but G.I. Joe's were the main ones, and, and Ninja Turtles. Those were like the two main toys that I had as a kid. And so, um, I think it was November, maybe? November or December, I heard they were coming out with a new updated G.I. Joe series comic book. And they were, they were like redoing it and uh, new storyline and stuff. And so I, I, was, I actually went to a bookstore. I was going to buy the G.I. Joe comic book because I thought I don't, I don't do a lot of reading. I should, I don't. I, I should read more. It's good for the brain, but I just don't. I read social media and the internet. It's about it. I don't read books anymore. But I thought, you know, a lot of days I get out here on the water or where I'm suspend fishing, and you've oftentimes got long periods of time between bites, and if I'm filming an edited video, I'm just kick back, relax. I'm not, I'm not like this where I'm actively talking to you and stuff. So I thought I could get those comic books and and read the gi joe story while i'm out on the water but come to find out bookstores don't sell comic books anymore who knew I, I i mean i hadn't bought a comic book since i was a kid i wasn't super into comics when i was little anyway i mean i had the i had some of the action figures like the 
obviously bat I'm a I'm a huge Batman. I'm still a huge Batman fan now, but I was a fan of the Batman toys more so than the Batman comic books, if that makes sense. Like I played with the toys, but I didn't read the comics. And I had some of the other stuff too, the Iron Man, Spider Man's and things like that, but I'm not much on the No, I was never much on the comic books. Had a few, but I wasn't like super into it. But yeah. I went up there to the bookstore in Knoxville, Barnes and Noble, and I was going to get a G.I. Joe comic book, and they don't sell comic books at all in there. And I was, this is back when, before I had quit Walmart, I was walking through, and they got a little book section there. And I looked, and I'd be done, they don't have comic books either. And I'm like, where do you even find a comic book these days? Like, when I was a kid, you'd see them at the bookstores. Gas stations sometimes had comic books, but not anymore. I don't even know where you get them at. So, I was like, well, I don't guess I'm going to be reading the G.I. Joe comic book because it's going to be too much trouble for me to get them. And I'm not going to pay 4 5 $6 shipping fee every month to get the new issue, so... Seemed like a good idea at the time, but yeah, too good to be true. I guess they'll go out of business since they ain't, since I ain't buying the, the magazines. I don't know. I don't know how many people be into it. I guess the, I, I don't guess kids today are into comic books and they don't play with toys or nothing nowadays. It's all video games. I guess the only people probably that would be interested in a G.I. Joe comic book would probably be people my age that are just nostalgic and missing their childhood. People that's gotten to be my age and realize that it sucks being an adult. And you wish you could go back in time to you were back when you were five, six years old and didn't have any responsibility and nobody judged you for taking naps in the afternoon not only did you not get judged for taking afternoon naps but it was encouraged to play with toys all your meals were prepared for you your clothes were laid out for you man life was so much better as a kid i don't know why we want to grow up so fast i mean i can remember being a kid teenager like can't wait till i can turn 16 and get my freedom start to drive and get out the house and think, boy how stupid was i if i could go back in time now i'd just stay i'd stay five six years old forever i'd just be a little league all-star and play with gi joes all day every day it's the thing folks we take life for granted you never know how good you have it until it's gone and then you reach a new stage in your life and you look back and you realize all the stuff that you thought you didn't like maybe you actually did that's how it goes 10 years from now i'll probably look at where i'm at right now in life and probably think the same thing Could this be too, because I just had a birthday recently. Happy birthday to me. Self high five, I survived another year. 40, 40 second trip around the sun or my 12th time turning 30 is what I prefer to say. But uh, a year older and for whatever reason, I guess I just, and I've noticed myself doing this with Christmas too. Christmas and birthdays have kind of become bittersweet in a way. Like, obviously, I'm, I mean, I'm happy to have survived another year and, and made it another trip around the sun, obviously. That's a good thing. And I'm fortunate to have people in my life willing to celebrate such an event. Same thing with Christmas. It's... Christmas is obviously different now than what it was when I was a kid. Now it's not as... When I was a kid, Santa Claus was a big deal. I mean, that's when you got your new toys and stuff. I didn't 
I didn't have a job. I didn't have money back then. Nowadays, if I want something, I just go buy it. I don't, I don't have to wait till Christmas or something I, or to receive a gift. I just go get it. Now, holidays are more about just family stuff. And so, uh, because of that, I think holidays have kind of become bittersweet because you obviously enjoy the time with family and everything around these holidays and events and stuff. It's, it's uh, enjoyable, but then you start, my mind, because I'm a glass half empty kind of guy, my mind then goes, as soon as it's over, as soon as Christmas is over, I'm driving home, or as soon as birthday's over, I'm driving home. You, your mind just goes to, it's like, well, now I'm another year older, I'm 42 now. How many more, how many more birthdays, how many more Christmases do I have with my family? You know, we're all getting older. And uh, you just start to, your mind kind of goes to that place that you don't want it to go to. It gets kind of, you know, you, you just, you think about this kind of stuff. And you're like, when, when is the, when is this Christmas the last Christmas type thing? And so it, it, it kind of, it changes your mindset a little bit and it takes away a little bit from the, I guess, happiness, joy, whatever that you felt before you started thinking about that. So it's kind of good in a way, I guess, because you can kind of ground you, makes you a little bit more, I guess, appreciative of the time that you have, but it's just a, those big events, the birthdays, the Christmases, the family events, it's just a, it's a reminder that the clock's ticking. It's just a matter of time. So, anyway, not trying to be Debbie Downer out here. But you know what I'm talking about. We all gonna die, people. Every single one of us. It's coming. Most of us gonna be sooner than we want sooner than we expect that's one thing about working er as long as i did is every day you go to work it was the worst day of somebody's life somebody had woke up that morning having no idea that it was their last day and that's going to be the case for me and you and everybody at some point in time we're all going to have that day so whatever you like doing whether it's catching big catfish in a kayak, collecting rocks, microwaving chicken nuggets, I don't care, whatever you're into, do the hell out of it. Do it as much as you can, as often as you can, because there's gonna come a time when you can't anymore and you're gonna wish you had. So days like today, maybe not the best weather days, sitting out here damp, there's gonna come a time when I'm gonna look back at other days like this and wish I had gone fishing when I, when I could have. There will never come a day though where I look back and be like, gee, maybe I shouldn't have hated on those bass fishermen so much because I really can't stand those people. I mean, he just drove down here a little while ago. What's it been, five minutes, 10 minutes? He barely made any cast down there. Now he's zipping right back up through here. These dang bass fishermen, man, I swear they're some of the dumbest people on the face of the planet. They enter these tournaments, you know, they'll spend, I don't know, 50 bucks, entry fee, $100 on an entry fee into the tournament. They'll spend another $100 plus dollars in gas, and they might win 200 but if they're lucky, they're going to break even at the end of the tournament. Like, tournaments are fun. I like fishing tournaments, but if I fish one and I win, I want to turn a profit. Like, I don't want to go, I don't want to go fish a tournament and lose money on the day. And every one of these local bass clubs around here, every one of them's losing money. And they ain't enough people in the tournaments for them to, to win enough to cover their expenses, especially when they're doing that right there and running all over the place, burning all that fuel. 
don't even get me started on their actual expenses because every one of these guys has got a bass boat that cost them more than 60, 70, some of them upwards of $100,000 nowadays. That's one, that's one thing about our kayak tournaments. I mean, Kayak Mike runs the, the trail, which is now part of King Cat, by the way. The King Cat Boat Tournament Trail. Um, these kayak catfishing tournaments that I'm going to be fishing this year, it's a part of the King Cat. We're the kayak division of that trail now. But these kayak catfishing tournaments, you can at least turn a profit. Like, if you travel somewhere the the sponsor money that they've gotten raised if you win you really if you get top three top if you get third place you're probably going to be close to breaking even but like if you get first or second place you're going to cover your expenses and turn a nice profit so it's worthwhile but like if you were going somewhere and they didn't have for instance if we were just dependent upon our entry fees in these prize pools if, if there wasn't sponsor money for the winnings you you couldn't go spend three or four nights in a hotel and do your pre-fishing and pay your tournament entry fee and all those expenses and and be able to 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 turn a profit on trip you'd, you'd lose money even if you won you'd lose money so I don't want to go somewhere and fish a tournament that I can't turn profit in. I mean, that that's just a fishing trip at that point in time. And if I'm going to do just a normal fishing trip that I'm going to be traveling for, or I want to make sure it's somewhere that I want to go under optimal conditions and not just be, you know, I mean, a tournament, you got you got to play the hand you dealt. If I show up down there for this tournament in Alabama and the wind's 100 miles an hour and water conditions are crap, well, you just got to suck it up and go fishing. Whereas if I was just planning a trip, I would look for days like, well, like coming up here when I'm going to go down there and fish for a couple of days. The weather's looking good and, uh, and water conditions are good. I think I'm going to be able to go down there and, and hopefully fish how I want to fish. So... Yeah, I don't understand these bass fishing guys. Probably just, it's an ego thing. They can feel like they're better than somebody because they caught more fish than the next person on a random day. I guess I'm lucky from that aspect. I got more going on in life. I don't really, I don't really care if somebody catches more bigger fish than me. I mean, I want to, don't get me wrong. If I'm in a tournament, I want to win and I'm going to try to win. I'm competitive. But as far as my happiness in life in general, just overall well-being, I don't I don't have to catch fish to be to live a happy life. And you you know what I'm trying to say. I mean every day you get on social media and scroll through, I don't care how good a day you've had, somebody's caught more and bigger fish than you every day. That's just how it is. And days where you went out and skunked and didn't do any good at all, and you think, boy, the weather and water, it was awful today. You get on social media, and guess what? Somebody a mile away from you was tearing them up. That's how it goes. So you can't let that stuff, can't let that stuff mess with your mind. Same with YouTube. I mean, you can't let your, you got to just post your videos. You can't worry about what everybody else is doing and, Maybe this channel's doing better than you. I mean, we're all doing our own thing. It's, you just gotta, you just, you just gotta, you gotta be grounded in life and you gotta, you gotta learn to just, you gotta learn to just, to just be happy in your own way. There's always gonna be a sleazy AT&T scumbag salesman that's gonna come along and disrupt your life a little bit and it's okay to be pissed off about it. It's okay to vent about it. But you just can't dwell on it for long periods of time. And that's one of the things that I've, over the course of my life, I feel like I'm getting a little better at. I still hold a grudge. Like, I'm a grudge-holding person. Five years from now, I will still be pissed off to an extent about AT&T. But 
I'm getting better at like not letting it disrupt my everyday. Obviously, yesterday I lost a day of fishing because of it. not just not just having to be home while the installation was going on, but then also afterwards too, the phone calls and just being pissed off. And like I knew, even if I could have got out yesterday afternoon, my attitude was soured to the point I wasn't going to be good talking to a camera. But there was a time in my younger, more temperamental days where I might have lost two or three days because of my bad attitude over something like that. So I think I'm getting better from that aspect. But the less I can deal with people, the less I have to be in those situations to begin with, because it's always people that bring, it's people or technology. It's motors messing up and, and internet problems or just people I don't want to deal with. Like if I can just keep to myself and keep life simple, man, things are so much better. That's why I always, I'm in that constant battle I mentioned there earlier, just having a kayak here with all the bells and whistles and gadgets, live scopes, motors, et cetera, et cetera, versus just sticking with my, my other kayak, my pedal kayak, we got another fish working here. He's after it. Yeah, he's got it. We got him. Well, no, I think he's come off. I thought we was going to crank down and jerk his jaw, but he let it go. Let's make sure our bait ain't foul hooked. I don't think we wanted to catch that in no way. Yeah, let's switch this bait out. He's he's ripped the gut out of it, gut pocket out. That fish there was trying to steal from us, folks. We had a thief, like AT and T, trying to steal that extra twenty dollars a month out of me by lying to me. That's what that fish was trying to do. Put it, I'll tell you what let's do. Just because we've got this surplus of bait, let's uh, put a new head on that other rod too. When we switch this chunk out, we'll just put a, let's replace both baits. I tell you what, though, I'm happy with the quality of fish we got today so far. I feel pretty good about the that and the numbers. If we're, I don't know where we're at here with the time. Almost three hours, but I mean, we've got several fish during this time. So I think it's been a pretty good, pretty good morning out here, productivity-wise. Could have been a little drier. Get that last scale off there. Okay. Let's send that one out. We'll reel in our head here while that one's going down. Yeah, we'll go ahead and switch this out. This head here, I mean, it's still it's still in good shape. We'd be fine, normal conditions, but just when you compare that to this, and you can see the difference. There's a lot more blood and oil. So, well, let me trim them fins. Y'all, about let me forget to trim them fins off there.
clean your cutting board off here. Y'all could have already done that for me. Hooey, y'all. The rain, knock on wood, the rain seems to have slacked off again for a second here. We're on some bait. See all that? Right there, that's a school of bait. And look right here, too. See where this, we're, we're right here on this other creek now, too. See how it loops around and comes out? Our baits are going down here, right there behind it. Because we're passing it up, so. Hopefully, if there's something here along this creek mouth, hopefully we're going to get on them here. Regardless, though, unless we just get something big, we're just going to keep working up through here. 41 feet here where we're at. Trying to basically just stay on the edge, the bottom edge, which again, that's where, I mean, that's where all the activity's been. The bait, the fish that we've caught and stuff, up on that flat and back in the creek I launched in, I mean, there just wasn't nothing, wasn't nothing on the screen. Just wasn't no life. Look at that one right there above that school. We ain't throwing it one all morning. Let's see if I can find him again. Let's just... Look, okay, we're going down on him right here. Look at this. Boy, this is going to be close. I'm going to be close to him. I've put it right in front of him. Oh, he didn't spook either. He's right there on it. It's swinging back to me lost sight of him now he did not spook I don't know that he even saw it okay he's coming back in the screen I think I need to oh man where did he go oh he's behind it now crap crap Ola. I thought we had a chance at that one. I almost hit him with it, but I don't think he ever saw it. He never reacted to it. He never, he never ran. Nothing. We hadn't thrown it one all morning though. Here's another one coming up. That's about 20 feet out or so. Oh, I've missed that one too far. I'll have to get closer. Okay, this one's looking good too. This one's looking good. Is he coming up to it? Is he? Uh, he's gonna swim on past. No interest. No interest in it. Meanwhile, I'm not paying attention. I'm running this up on the stain ledge. as it starts to rain yet again. Never fails. You think it's gonna give you a little break and here it comes again. We'll set that there though. We may throw it a few more as we move along here. If we're gonna start seeing some fish up, I'm gonna adjust our gain. See if we can. Yeah, well, that's a bunch of bait right there. Though. Look at all that. See all that right there along. It's like 35 down to 40 feet. It's just shad. There's some. That looks like a little bit bigger marker that was there. Maybe that one too. There's some fish under this, but it don't seem like they're actively feeding on those shad, or else they'd be all busted up. They're, the school seems pretty consistent. But maybe we drive or drag these baits behind us here that's got the blood and the oils and stuff. It's going to hopefully maybe seem like it's an easy meal for them and maybe we'll trigger a reaction strike or two. I swear I think that lens is, you know, I swear I think that lens is smudged. I got to get a dry spot on my, well, we've had water go down that, down my, 
rancid. Let's see how this side looks. See if I can clean y'all off here. Maybe I can get the back side of this. This is filming today has been suspect, y'all. How you looking now? Better at least. Filming today has just been a something else. Not my best performance today. We're making the most of it though. Y'all are, if you've stuck with me this long, I appreciate you. I appreciate you clicking on the video regardless, but especially if you've stuck with me for however long we've been at it now, close to, probably, probably close to three hours, I guess. I think we had the battery problems 40 something minutes. So we're probably close to three hours. We just gonna film another 30 45 minutes here because i gotta i gotta keep this under four hours to have any chance of getting any views something about going over that four hour mark man it just youtube just ain't going to push it it ain't it ain't even that, that like people don't necessarily like the video it don't get clicked on period so the videos that are even if they're titled four hours or something if they're under four hours, they get clicks. Longer than four hours, not so much. Notice that with my live streams too. The live streams, replays that have gone over four hours, piss poor views. Under four hours, a lot of them, the replays got hundreds of thousands of views. So something about the algorithm don't like beyond four hours. There's a little YouTube pro tip for you. Oh, here's one that's up. Let me just drop straight down. I think he's going to swim into it here. He's moving. Well, he's high up. Oh, he just turned. Did y'all see him turn? Crap. He was on. He was hitting him to get it, buddy. I saw him. I had time to drop down. And he was coming. I'd like to catch another one on that jig right there it's fun but like i said if you were if we were just out here just roaming around looking for fish that were up boy it makes for a long day if you're not seeing something it's just it's brutal i think those are some we've went through the bait obviously but i think some of those fish there that popped up i think those are uh, maybe it is but i can't tell if it's bait or other fish could just be bait that's kind of smaller schools there that are packed tight together and look like a look like a fish there's another one we can maybe throw at them i'm getting back on the screen Okay, here we go down. We're looking good. We're looking good. Oh, I'm trying to be right there in front of him. Oh, there he goes too. Never got his attention. Didn't spook him. Never got his attention. Yeah, another one kind of coming in right there. I'm just going to leave my jig down there a second. And see if I can line that up with him so he's gonna yeah he's about to swim right into it that one is he ain't very big he said heck with it no maybe not i don't know there's okay there's my jig he's coming up behind it there still he's right there on it yeah he's lost interest now Yeah, who knows if those were cats or not. I don't know what they are. That one there wasn't much bigger than the jig from looking at it on the screen. Think about it, it don't take a big fish to have a good time. That right there may be just some bait. I can't tell. 
I think that's bait. It's off the screen now anyway. No, that may actually be a big fish right there. He's swimming. He's swimming over here to our right. Okay, we're, we're about to we're about to hit him with it right there, folks. Let's get right there on him. Oh. Nope, can't get his attention. My jig's going back that way because we're moving. That's a bigger mark. I don't know what he is. He's up. Hmm. Yeah, I suck at this, folks. Don't don't let some of my other videos where I've caught a few with this live scope and jig fool you into thinking that I can do it consistently. I can. I, I have my moments. I'm getting better at getting the jig in front of fish. But if it's catfish, I can get them to eat it. But if it's some other kind of fish, not guaranteed. I have caught a few drum doing this. But most of everything I've caught has been cats. Unless I've been using a smaller jig and got some crappie. Which that's another thing that this live scope has been real helpful on is crappie. Like I self-admittedly maybe the world's worst crappie fisherman without live scope but with live scope i can i can usually find some may not be able to find the best quality or or get a bunch of them necessarily but i can usually if i went out and, and if you told me i had to go catch some crappie today if i put enough time into it i'd eventually find some brush that had some crappie on it and be able to put a bait in front of them but other species it's kind of just sporadic man whether or not i see them up in the water column anyway using this live scope while i've just been out in my normal suspend fishing trips where i'm spot locked on somewhere anchored on a spot you see fish come up to eat your baits but that ain't really uh, you know that that's really not like using live scope to catch fish i was talking about this somewhere it may have been my members channel members video i did but you you having all these guys now they pull up on a spot and they look at live scope and they say oh there's fish there and then they fish like normal and when they catch fish they credit the live scope for catching them well i caught these fish because of live scope i saw them there and I think that's a load of bull butter because they're not using the live scope to catch them. They're just looking at an area, seeing if fish is there, and then setting up like normal. Well, you can do that with a regular graph. You can do that with 2D. You can use that side scan. Just you know, If you're just looking to see if a fish is there before you set up on them, to me, if you're using live scope and giving it credit for catching fish, it's doing like what we've been trying to do here with this jig where like you see a fish on the screen you put your bait right on its nose and you catch that fish if you just look and say okay well there's fish here and then you set up like normal well what's special about the live scope you can do that with any graph so that's my that's my take on that i'm gonna put that map card back up because we're veering off a little bit from that ledge let me get back over here a little closer to it I hear the geese over there. I think it's about geese mating season time. They need to, they need to just make it a geese season, a year-round hunting season is what they need to do. Those things are some of the most, they're almost as obnoxious as jet skis and bass fishermen. They're on the list. Wake borders and houseboats at the top of the list, but them geese, they're up there. We got a, got a little snag we're working on here. 
Okay. Pulled through it. Whatever we're going across is rough right now. I feel it. I feel it sinker. Okay. Yeah, if you don't take any tips away from me in these videos, that right there is one that's worth remembering. Just, you see yourself starting to get snagged, give yourself some slack, lift straight up. That will save you so many rigs and save you a lot of time too if you're somebody like me that's going to turn around and go get them. You can't go get your rigs when you're planer board fishing because it takes too much time. You got to reel everything else up and then reset everything. But you're doing like I'm doing day and just fishing two rods. It's it's not that big a hassle to reel up one and go get the other that's snagged. But I still don't want to do that no more often than I have to. So. Bear with me here a second, folks. I'm going to get me a give me a swig here. I'm getting a cotton mouth talking to you. Wouldn't mind having me a snack too, but I know y'all ain't gonna listen to me eat, so I didn't bring anything. I had a ton of complaints. It's been two or three years, I reckon. But one of my snacks that I used to take on fishing trips would be sunflower seeds. And it never failed. You'd have a mouthful of sunflower seeds, and that's when a fish is going to hit, right? And so I had a ton of complaints. People was upset because I was talking with a mouthful of seeds. And so I just I quit taking them on my trips. Just one less thing to get complaints about. Well, I definitely don't want to be crunching in your ears. I had a banana on the way out here. It tied me over till I get home today. Cause like I said, I I, I thought I was going to be off the water eleven ish anyway, just to beat the weather out of here. But it was looking okay on the radar when I looked a little while ago, and I think it's about eleven now, eleven twenty two actually. So yeah, it's later than I thought. <clears throat> yeah we're just going to give it a little while longer here and as that rod falls and we'll make sure we wrap this crap up before the four hour mark having hopefully caught some more fish between now and then we got on some down there where that other creek dumped in but not a whole lot going on since they were just kind of hanging out and I'm my guess is my guess is that they were using that particular creek bed right now to move in and out of and work up in the shallows and feed. Or they could have just been using it to relate to since the bait seems to be kind of hanging out here on the bottom of this ledge. I mean, we're seeing a bunch more and we're actually seeing more bait now up here than we were, what we were further on down river there. So. Those fish, they, they may be, if, if we're getting into the school, the further we're going up on this ledge, those fish may have been just kind of hanging out just downstream of those the bait, possibly, which would make sense, right? Because if, if, you got, if you've got thousands of shad in those schools, I mean, tens of thousands, a lot of those shad are probably going to die of natural causes, right? And as they die, they fall down in the water current pushes them downstream if those fish are set up downstream of that school food's coming right to their face makes sense you can rationalize about anything in your mind but we're going to keep this path going though anyway regardless just because i want to keep working into the current here current's very light today we're so far away from the dam. I think they're still spilling at the dam, but we're so far away from it, like it's not really all that noticeable. 
it's one thing about down there in Alabama, depending on where you fish, like if I fish on Wilson for the tournament, I'm probably not going to have, I'm not going to have any current issues to deal with. But if the wind's up, because it's so wide open out there, you're going to have a lot of chop, a lot of up and down of the water. If I go down to Pickwick, and in this term, it's we, we can launch Wilson or Pickwick, any public launch site. It's basically from the top of Wilson to the bottom of Pickwick. It's all eligible water. But if I go down to Pickwick, I'm going to have current. And when I used that launch that that last week when I went down there where all the bass boats were at, I put in there for a little while. The current was about like 1.8 to 2 mile an hour range. But it's much more narrow. Well, that area that I was fishing anyway, uh, kind of the river portion, it was much more narrow. So wind isn't going to be as big a factor if it's blowing. So kind of... I definitely want to. I definitely want to look around on Pickwick when I go back. I want to spend some more time there. If I can get on a bite on Pickwick, figure out some spots, then that's probably going to be the right play for tournament day. Just, just because the wind will affect me so much on Wilson, and I don't know what the odds are. I mean, if a if a bookie in Vegas was placing odds on is the wind going to blow or not on tournament day i would bet that farm that it's going to blow so it'd be nice to have some some plan figured out to where the wind won't be a factor for me <clears throat> i may throw at that fish right there about 25 feet down in a second if he's He'll hold that line right there. He ain't very big, but what the heck. Let's just do it. There's my jig. I've lost sight of him. He was around that area. I've lost sight of him. Yeah, hell, I done lost sight of him, folks. Take you. It's like Daphne the dog. You take your eye off her for a second, she's gone. That was that fish. Went off the screen for a second and gone. We got some more. Those looks like a couple better marks there along the bottom right here. We're going to be passing up with these dragon baits here shortly. It's going basically keeping this transducer. It's on this pole here beside me, and that piece of tape tells me where it's facing. So I've got it kind of going right here. That way I can toss that jig out kind of in this open area here. It's easy with me being left-handed and having this open space. It's easy to land a jig right there. But we need fish to be lined up right there because that transducer beam is very narrow when it comes off the when it comes off that transducer very narrow and the further you go out it kind of just expands slowly out like that so when you're throwing at fish that are 15 20 feet in front of you like you need them you need them in that little window to be able to see them a lot of them people the bass fishermen that are targeting those trophy bass with the live scope, a lot of them, what they're doing is they're keeping their screen, they're looking 100 feet out. And then as they come up on fish, they'll reduce it in. I talked to a guy the other day, he was a crappie fisherman, real nice guy. You know, I don't, I don't particularly get along with crappie fishermen all that much, but this guy, he was a really nice guy. He, he knew me, he'd watched the videos and stuff, so he'd come up and talk to me. Now he had live scope and he had been catching some crappie that particular day. We got back to the launch at the same time. And I was asking him questions about live scope and he was saying he normally runs his 60 feet out and he'll spot a fish and he'll work his way up to it and then reduce his screen down to 30 feet, and make it look bigger. And he only runs his depth, he said, 15 feet deep. Like right now I've got my depth set, I think at like 50 feet down 
because we're in 40 feet and it kind of it lets us see fish that are on the bottom or just off the bottom but when he's crab fishing he said he only he's only interested in that top 15 feet of the water column whether even if he's in 30 feet of water he only cares about the top 15 feet so he sets his depth at that and that makes everything look bigger on the screen he can kind of drop it makes it easier for him to target those individual fish but me i'm lazy uh i don't first off i don't see fish very well when i'm looking 100 feet out uh, for me about 50 feet out is about maybe 60 sometimes depending on how deep I am, that's about as far as I can really look and be able to see stuff. And I'm I'm lazy. I don't like to try to fiddle with that screen while I'm trying to line up on a fish. So I'm pretty much just like leaving it as is. Like right now, I think we're looking like 40 feet out in front of us. And we see a fish in time, drop a jig down. If not, we keep going till we see the next one. I think maybe even though I like catching fish with this method, because I don't really like looking for fish with it, I, I, I that was something tapped us right there a second ago. I don't know. I just maybe I'm not cut out to be a live scoper. That's what it boils down to. I may just not be cut out for it. We all got our skills and talents in life, and. I, I just don't know. I don't know that I'm a live scoper at my core. I'm just, I'm a Buck Perry guy. Buck Perry sure as heck didn't need no dang live scope. He didn't even have graphs back then. He had them old paper graphs. He had to make his own lake maps. He'd use the spoon plugs and troll along and figure out where the brake lines were and draw his own maps. If I got a contour map, if you tell me the contours, give me that map card and give me depth and speed, that's all I really need. Everything else, just luxury. I mean, I caught thousands of fish long before I ever had that live scope. Hell, I caught thousands of fish before I ever had a map card. <laughs> Some of my early videos on this channel, I had that four inch, that little four inch Lowrance. And I'd pull out my phone occasionally and look at Navionics and compare it to what I was seeing on the graph, make sure I was where I thought I needed to be. Then I got that other Raymarine graph. It was a five inch model and it had the Navionics card in it. So I could split my screen, half of it fish finder and half of it map card and that was that was a game changer for me not having to pull out my phone to see the map card and this garmin unit here and i got it of course it's got the built-in map card whatever which i don't think that map card's as good as the navionics chip in my old bray marine i don't think it's as accurate for the most part it's okay but there's been some places where it's like way off and that's out here. I mean, some bodies of water is way different. Like when I went up to the Ohio River last year, I went up there to Rising Sun, Indiana, that section of the Ohio River. Like that map, I mean, might as well not even had it. It was so far off. Like anybody that's on the Ohio River, if you're paying money for Navionics or Sea Maps or whatever, whatever that garbage is, that you've got on a particular graph, like you ought to get your money back on it. Cause it's just so inaccurate. You get closer to the truth out of AT&T salesmen than you do them Navionics chips on the, <laughs> on the Ohio River. And that's saying something folks. Cause I could tell you firsthand AT&T salesmen are scumbags. Lion scumbags. Old Mason, whatever his name was, on my doo doo list permanently. Can't believe he gave me the wrong phone number. 
That's the ultimate. Like he knew he lied to me. It'd be one if it was an honest mistake, and I could have got him on the phone and him and him just be like apologetic about it and be like, "Oh man, look, I'm sorry. I I misunderstood. I thought it was." But once I tried calling and realized he had gave me the wrong number, it's like, "Oh, I I know you lied to me intentionally. You just thought you'll get this done." I'll get everything rigged up there, the fiber optic cable in the house, and it'll be too much trouble to undo everything. That's what he thought. And I'd just pay the extra money and be done with it because I wouldn't want to go through the hassle. Well, when he gets his commission check, he's going to realize that I am willing to go through the hassle, folks. Absolutely am to prove a point. And here's the other thing. When I called AT&T, like they've, they've sent their technician out. They've paid him wages. And I don't know how much they get paid to do that, but I would assume it's a lot. I mean, it's a pretty technical job to do that kind of thing. He spent four and a half hours or so out there working on that. And somebody's going to come out there. They're going to have to send a crew to come undo everything that he put up wouldn't it have just been smarter to say look justin we're sorry the salesman lied to you let's just here's what we'll give you a promotional rate or something we'll give you 20 dollars off per month like they told you to get we'll do it for a year or so wouldn't that have been the smart thing to do to try to appease me to try to keep me as a customer Versus just taking an entire loss on the people that you're sending out for the job. Like, recoup the money. You can give me $20 off a month. Obviously, it's still profitable for them, or else they wouldn't be giving it to their regular phone customers. So, you would have thought they would have tried to appease me somehow. But, that woman on the phone, buddy, she's ready to let me walk. I guess she was sick of my attitude. And I don't blame her, because I did have an attitude. But yeah, done with at and Hopefully the utility board will show up soon. Hopefully it's not a... Hopefully I didn't get moved to the back of the line. It'd be nice to upload these hour, these three hour long videos in 10 minutes instead of 10 hours. about y'all I'm yawning a little bit sleepy it might take me a mid-afternoon siesta today I got some plans this evening I'm gonna go up to Pigeon Forge play a little putt-putt it was a little even though my birthday's done past <clears throat> my birthday's done past but doing some more birthday celebration so I'm gonna be playing some putt putt I'm gonna go to the local goat restaurant and it's not like an actual goat restaurant but that's the name of the place local goat and it's really good like it's I mean it's really good place to eat so going up there to do that this evening what they're doing over here He's right over there along the... I thought that was like super shallow right there where he's at. He's got a dog with him too. See, I couldn't do that with Daphne. I, I, I couldn't do that. One, she's too big to be in the kayak. But if I got that close to the bank with Daphne, she would see a squirrel, a rabbit or something, jump out the kayak and be gone, and I wouldn't get her back. Like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. It's one thing if she gets out in my neighborhood, these good Samaritan neighbors of mine are going to call me about it. But if she got out somewhere random, she'd, she'd be, unless she ended up at the pound, I wouldn't be getting her back. She's got a chip, a microchip, so 
if she ended up at a vet or a pound, they could scan it and call me. But and she's got her collar on too with the phone number. But my neighbors, they call. I, you know, and I don't know why this is a new thing in the last. Well, it's the last few years because I, when I first moved into the neighborhood, there was, and this is back before I had a fence or anything, there were other dogs in the neighborhood. And I would see them occasionally. They'd be up at my house sniffing around, peeing on trees and stuff. And they would do their thing and they would leave. Sometimes I'd go out there, if I was out in the yard, I'd pet them, play with them a minute and then let them go on their way. And they'd find their way back home. I wasn't going to call the neighbors or anything. Is that a fish right there or is that part of that bait school? I think that's part of that bait school. But that's how it was back in the day. Just a few years ago, you would, if a dog was in your yard, you'd play with it, pet it, leave it be, and it would go home. But now, really since social media come along, now everybody has an opportunity to rescue a dog. They can be a social media hero and get all them extra clicks and thumbs ups and the little heart button if they take the neighbor's dog that just wandered off to their yard and take it in their house and take pictures of it and be like, oh, lost dog. Does anybody, does anybody know who this dog belongs to? So worried. It's such a good dog. I guess I'll take it to the vet tomorrow. It's like, just leave the damn dog be. It'll find its way home. And I have no doubts that Daphne, if you would just, if my neighbors would just let her be, let her sniff around. She doesn't hurt anything. She doesn't chew up anything. Like she's, she's an overall, she's a good dog. Very defiant behavioral issues, but you know, we're past the stage where she was ripping the gutter off my parents' house. She's not going to do that to my neighbors. Just leave her alone, and she will eventually, an hour or two later, probably come back to my house. But she never gets the opportunity to do that because I've got some hero out there wanting to rescue a dog, and they've, they get hold of her, and then they call. Fish. Fish right there. Oh, boy, he's pulling. He's pulling. It's on the head bait. It's on the head. Here, let's get this. Y'all get the jig pole here. Here, one of Grab that pole, y'all. Lord, I can't. I told you that jig pole is always in the way. Well, it's been a while since we got a bite, too, ain't it? I feel like we had a dry spell. This is another one that feels okay right here, too. Curious, we get him up here, see if he's on a on the head or on the fly. So far, just the one on the fly, but I mean that's an extra bite we wasn't gonna get. So that's that's how them flies have been for me since I started using them on them suspending rigs. It's just a bunch of extra bites. And I go fishing. I need some extra bites. You <laughs> know, that's why I'm out here. I want to catch fish. I do hope to get some more flatheads on them flies as time goes on. I think earlier there, I think we had a flathead bite. The way that rod tip was setting, like I really think it was a flathead. We'll never know. Yeah, this one here, he's on the head, but he ain't as big as what I thought. He felt bigger than he is. But it's another bite, which has been limited in the last little while. Come here, fish. Come here. Open that mouth up. There you go. Thanks for leaving the head bait on, too. Nice of you, fish. Nice of you. This is considerate fish right here. This fish is way more considerate than the construction workers at the hotel that tear up the, the rooms there. Look at his mouth. I think he might have been caught before. Well, get out of here, man. 
the old laundry thing. I should start letting it line back out. The bait still looked like it was up good. Hey, look here. Look here. Am I imagining that? Yeah, we got one on here too. We got one on this rod. I didn't even know we had one on. I just glanced over and I saw some more. Oh, did he come off or is he coming at me? I think we got a fish on. I don't think he's very big. That's probably why. That's probably why we didn't feel him. He probably just ain't big enough to be felt. Yeah, definitely a fish though. Well, we just got doubled. We just went through a another batch of fish oh, that's another tiny one right here he's actually got the he's got to fly but i think he accidentally got to fly i think he's got it up under the he got it up under the chin there let's, you know, let's close that bail over on that one yeah, this one here. Well, hey, what have you done here, fish? I can't even see. I don't even know where that... Okay, maybe it went in from, from that angle. Come here, fish. Let me get it out of you. Whenever you're done, fish. Y'all get control of your fish here, would you? I'd done have him unhooked if he'd calmed down. Boy, that thing's in there good. There we go. You lucky fish, you almost got that in the gills. I'm gonna throw that bait back out, I think. Eh, let's change it out. We could, if we wasn't, if we wasn't surplus on bait, we could have reused it, but we are surplus. So. Now that's two more fish, y'all. And again, the numbers on today, pretty productive. The quality down there at that other creek mouth, pretty productive too. So it's been a, it's been a good day. Another encouraging thing is even though we've been running all this extra length on the flies behind the the hooked bait, we're still not getting no snags with it. We ain't been snagged all morning. So that's encouraging. Every time I talk, down it goes. Head up and clean our cutting board again. Two more fish. Gotta keep an eye on that clock there, y'all. I'm pretty sure we were, I think we we're around the 48 minute mark when I had the battery problems earlier. I'll take a look at radar again here too, make sure I'm still I'm still good out here. Well, I thought by now, I thought we were supposed to be getting. 
No, oh, it's still good. Still spotty showers in the area. Still good. The old weatherman botched it again. Just so happens this time it kind of benefited us. Put that bell over here. Let's keep chugging along. It's probably a good time to be ending the video soon anyway because I'm about out of things to talk to you about. I don't think we've... I think we've covered every, every issue going on in the world right now. But yeah, y'all, if you're in the Alabama area, some of you, I got a lot of viewers down there. Uh, and you want to come on out there after the tournament there, check in Logan's Roadhouse in Florence. Be out there. I'll probably stay out there. Yeah, the check ins at we got to be back by four, but I'll probably stay out there, piddle around for an hour or so, chatting with people and stuff before I leave. And either, well, and who knows, maybe longer than that because if the weather's looking good there that Sunday, I may end up just staying fishing down there the next day possibly we'll see game time decision so far out you know you can't really not that a weather report's accurate as evidence today but way too far out to be looking for that kind of thing right now I hope I do good though. I'd, I'd feel better if I'd had a better trip when I went down before, I'd feel better about it. But I just don't have a good plan. I don't have a good plan of where I want to go, what I want to do. I don't have a backup plan. Even for my bad plan, I don't have a good backup plan if the wind's up. So I gotta, I still got some things to work out down there. Chickamauga, Nick and Jack, those tournaments on the schedule. Even if the weather or whatever reason I don't get to pre-fish very much for them. I've fished those places enough that I don't I don't necessarily have to pre-fish. You know, I can show up and just with the knowledge I have having fished those places before and have a reasonable expectation of doing well. But you take a place that I've never been to before, it's like, well, it's tough to just show up and wing it. Bear with me a second, y'all. I got snot running out my nose. I got to deal with it. My handkerchief kind of got damp. With all this rain. Okay. I think my nostrils are cleaned out now. Y'all have heard all kinds of stories today. Me cleaning out my nose here on this video. You've heard about my intestines getting cleaned out from the salad bar down there at the hospital in Clarksville. Y'all have heard everything today. starting to sprinkle again. At least my battery pack uh, got it working. At least that panned out. We'd been changing out batteries every hour, 45 minutes to an hour. I like being able to plug that battery pack in when I, I got that other camera I use sometimes too, that DJI camera, and it's okay. Battery life's a lot better in it. Video quality ain't as good as GoPro. But that camera, if you use a microphone with it, you can't 
plug in the battery pack. You can do one or the other. So I just don't use it very often. Let's throw with this fish right here. He's up. He's like 15 feet down. Uh, does he see it? Oh, he's coming. He's coming. He's, oh. Oh, the other one's right there. There was two of them. Oh, he hit. Oh, my gosh. And I botched it. He hit it, folks. <laughs> oh, there was two of them. There was two of them. One swam off and the other turned back. And he hit it and I missed him. Let's see if we can get this one here that's... Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to land way behind him. Hopefully it'll swing into him. Yeah. I'm going to miss that one. Crap. I threw too far on that one. We got that one to Ito, by gosh. I just, I missed him. Didn't get a good hook set on him. Boy, it's fun though. I tell you, man, that's, that's what makes it fun. That right there. But when you've been out here all dang morning and you ain't seen that much that you can throw on and the ones you have ain't giving you the time of day, you can see, I mean, it just ain't as productive a technique as what we've been doing more traditionally here with, with, with like dragon today for instance let's see if i can bring it up to that one can't tell which direction he's pointing yeah. boy if we could have got that one on the jig that would have been the way to that would have been the way to close out the video right there that would have been perfect Now something's wrong with my screen on here. What's up with that? I don't even know what's going on with this thing. I got all kinds of cam. The thing's still flashing. Hopefully we're still. Hopefully we're still recording. I don't know what the heck. My screen's froze up though. Lord, y'all. All these dang camera malfunctions today. What is going on today? Well, I hope you've enjoyed, even, even though this video technically ain't uncut at this point because we had the battery problem earlier, I hope y'all have at least enjoyed the trip. Through all the malfunctions, the rain, everything else, we've caught some fish today. We've had some fun. Got some decent fish too. Trying out our fly rigs. They're working out. Not been snagged. Knock on wood, ain't been snagged a single time yet. So they're pulling through good. And, and I know over the course of time, whether we get flatheads, more flatheads or not, I know we will catch more fish with those flies just over the course of time. Like it's it's gonna happen, just like it did with the the suspend fishing rigs. So it's just a just a matter of logging the hours. We'll turn the transducer just a little bit because I think that's a fish that we can throw at right there. Yeah, let's see what we can do with this one. We're about to, but we're about to plunk him with it. Look at this. We just stop it and put it down there. Oh, he hit it. He hit it. There we go. We finally got one, by gosh. We finally got one. Oh, you better come on, fish. It's pouring down rain right here behind us. I can literally hear it raining behind us. I can see it. <laughs> That's a blue cat. Oh, oh, he spit it right there, too. We've got the quick release on him. <laughs> That's awesome. Wasn't very big, but that was a dang good time. You know what ain't a good time, though? Let me tell you what ain't a good time here, folks. 
you know what it's time to go to the house i'm sick of getting i just looked at radar a little while ago and it was looked like some light green showers in the area i'm about to put the hood on right here and i'm gonna show you what i'm talking about I, you maybe see it you're about to see it when it starts pouring in rain like you can hear it raining right there i don't know if you can see it on camera but i can literally see it coming here comes the rain you can hear it pouring down over there on the other side i just looked at radar just a few minutes ago i just pulled it back up it was looking okay just a few light showers in the area it was light green this right here don't appear to be light green this is the hardest rain we've had out here yet and it's about to get worse because i can hear it over yonder in them trees lord almighty y'all well i tell you what this is this is mother nature's way of telling me it's probably time to wrap up the video because we're coming up probably on the four hour mark when i combine the part before the battery issue and this and you know what i'm trying to say and well if we keep going on here together we're gonna have to bust out the squeegee to keep y'all the lens dry here yeah man it's coming down right now see anyway y'all another day in the life here buddy <laughs> hope you enjoyed it at least this unedited video we caught several fish got some good quality fish and uh yeah so on top of that on top of all the fishing don't don't get at&t's internet service y'all you'll regret it sleazy scumbag salesman don't do it so anyway i'm gonna wrap up a video i think i'm gonna fish just just up past here just past this island here and then i'm probably gonna call it a day because i'm about sick of getting wet out here and this is fairly it's gonna keep going on and on and like i said it, it, regardless of what the radar shows it was supposed to be bad right now today hold on hold on we're gonna catch another one before i let you go this fish right here don't give a crap that it's raining man he don't give a crap this fish has been wet his whole life hopefully the camera lens can stay dry long enough for you to see it but i'm gonna fish up here just past this island and i'm gonna get the heck out of here i'm gonna call it a day go home give me a give me a little lunch a light lunch i don't want to ruin my appetite for the local goat tonight and again it ain't a goat restaurant i don't think they serve goat at all but it's that's the name of it and it's really good i want to save plenty of room for it because they give you a, a big portion of food up there so eat me a light lunch maybe get me a afternoon siesta in this one here's got the fly too folks another one on the fly he got it up under the chin also this is another accidental hook let me have that hook back fish i'm gonna have to get my hands on this and too there we go i was trying to quick release you it didn't work out fish lordy days but hey yeah productive day numbers we got some big fish we got one on the on the jig there on the live scope sniping so other than the rain it's been a good day y'all but i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching